is up, guys? And welcome to PC's Mag. One cool thing, back to school live stream. I am Justin Roby, aka Roby Tech, and I'm here with who am I here with? You're here with John Burek. I am the lab director for PC Mag and also an executive editor on the team. Wow. You know what? Your title is just way cooler than mine. Uh, sorry, chat. Apparently, I need to just go offline and come up with a better title because that is just way cooler than me. But anyway, today we are here in partnership with Walmart to talk about the best to uh, best back to school laptops for all kinds of students. We got every kind of student covered, right, John? Yep, yeah. So we've got 11 machines behind us over here, as you can see. A lot big, to cover. Yeah, there's an awful lot to cover over here. We've got clamshell machines, we've got two in one machines, we've got Chromebooks. We've got some gaming units and a couple of, well, we'll leave that one to us. We'll, we won't give away all the, all the fun yet. <laughs> Wait, but, let's just say it has something to do with Rage John, yeah, uh, who we're going to get to see a little bit later, uh, if you guys don't know. But anyway, if you're already watching the stream, whether that's from my Twitch, my YouTube, PC Mag's YouTube, PC Mag's Twitter, actually, you're going to want to watch the stream over at PCMag.com um, because that is going to be like the most rich experience. It's all part of this new thing called Talk. Talk Shop Live, which isn't new, but uh, new for all of us. Right. Uh, so head on over there. It's like a rich experience uh, where you can see the laptops. You can purchase them, make an account. It makes it really easy. So if you, uh, hopefully by the end of this, you found something that really works for you. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, with this whole array that we have here, most of these machines are under a grand. We have a couple that are borderline a little bit above. But depending on what you're looking for uh, for a student that you have going to school, whether they're a college student or a grade school student or somewhere in between, there's probably going to be something here that sort of hits that sweet spot for you. Yeah, I think I, I'm, I'm very excited about today's show because this is just an opportunity for you and I to basically nerd out on a bunch of tech. Now, you have actually tested every single one of these machines personally, hundreds of millions of hours on each ma million. <laughs> Let's, let's leave it at hundreds. <laughs> hundreds, hundreds of hours of, yeah. <laughs> that, these, that your team has spent on each one of these laptops. So this isn't just us making stuff up. This is literally a ton of data. Um, and then we just kind of categorized everything into like a best in class for a bunch of different things. So you should come away with something. And then, of course, uh, we can see chat. So if you have things that you want to talk about, if you have questions that you have, we're here. We can look at that stuff. And, of course, uh, also, uh, also just answer your questions. And people are saying, uh, yes, we will have Macs. People are like, are there going to be Macs? Yes, there will be Macs. There will be Macs. As some people are already saying Macs are the worst, but they're not. It well, depends on what you want, right? Right, so, and we're going to go over that. Yeah. I've got angry people here in the, in the, in the, in yeah. the audience already who are like screaming, they're like, what? No, I love Mac. So <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely in Mac land over here on the East Coast versus where we're used to. Yeah, so I mean, we've got Chrome machines. We've got a couple of Macs in the middle there, a lot of Windows going on as well. And we're going to get into all sort of the subtleties of that and the nuances of if you're in grade school versus you're in college versus you have a middle schooler, like what really fits what they're doing? What are they majoring in if they're a college student? What is their school using if they're in grade school? We're going to get into all that. Yeah, and so the, I think the one thing that we will say, and I thought this was like a, just a great piece of advice at the very beginning, is like one thing we will know, especially as you're going into any uh, school environment, is to find out what the school uses. Because in a lot of ways, schools actually like, um, you know, like eSport orgs or anything like that, have their environments that work best. So if you are looking at a Mac, you might want to make sure that that's going to work very well in the mm -hmm. IT and stuff like that. So if you're a parent, and you're questioning or even a student looking and, and purchasing one of these laptops today, always go and see, hey, what does my school use? Because some of them actually might right. be uh, Chrome OS and actually might work really well with a Chromebook. Right, or even within the Windows world. Yep. Sometimes like colleges, like one of my, um, two of my sons at a college that actually has a deal with Lenovo. And yeah. Lenovo can do overnight repairs on campus. They keep uh, parts stock. So it's very important that no matter where your uh, student is sort of in their educational journey that you sort of see either from other parents or from admins at the school like what is supported and what sort of fits in the environment there. So a lot of these machines are great machines in and of themselves, but some might be better than others just because of where the student goes to school. Yep. yep. So John, we actually have so much to cover and you are so excited about this. I think we should go ahead and start actually highlighting some products. What do you think? Yeah, let's you go You guys for ready it. for this chat? You ready for this? Looks yep. like you guys, it looks like people are getting geared up ready. And again, we see your questions. So of course, if you see something you want to know about, chat, just reach out and let us know. But let's start right. with what is this bad boy? It is light. I will tell you that right now. Throw it over. Yeah, there we go. Oh, well. Hands Don't over throw it over. <laughs> well, can't throw it a little bit. Yeah, right. how many? That was, yeah. So maybe that's a prediction. How many of these laptops will we break on this stream? Mm, yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. Bend it. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. No, I know. no, no, yeah. no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, this, one, this one's not so tough. So right. uh, what we're looking at, and we're going to show you guys here on screen, this is on Walmart.com. This is the HP Pavilion. This is a 13.3-inch Aero, uh, the 13.3 inch Aero laptop. It's an AMD Ryzen 5 uh, 5625U. It's got eight gigs of RAM, a 512 uh, SSD, uh, and it's in natural silver. Um, right. It's light. I think it's super thing. light. And yeah. uh, so, what? So highlights. So what are some of the things about this one? Okay. Well, the first thing really is we're saying that this is a good clamshell for say a commuting student, for a student who is going to be carrying a lot, and also has to carry a whole lot of textbooks. 
probably need to put it in a sleeve because it's very um, thin and flexy and you probably don't want to have it jammed between a couple of you know, books and getting jostled around too much. The key thing is lightness and CPU power is what we have in here. So um, you might want to show this off here, Justin. Oh yeah, the, um, this is actually pretty cool. So yeah, here we're going in this. Um, so you want to talk a little bit about this. This is like a new trend mm -hmm. um, with the ratio um, specifically in 2021 and stuff like that. So monitor ratio, what are, we, what are we talking about here? Right, so the panel size, or I should say the panel aspect ratio on this machine is what's called 16 by 10 in the business. And what that is is a squarer ratio than a lot of the laptops that came before. So you typically had 16 by 9 screens which were wide and sort of more geared towards watching movies or sort of consuming media. This you'll notice is squarer, and if you're doing things where you need to see more vertical space, whether that's, um, say, uh, you're doing a report and you just need to see more uh, text on the screen in a word processor, or for web pages to be able to see more vertically, this gives you a little more space that way. So you'll see several others like that in the, um, in the group that we have here, but that's sort of the trend in a lot of productivity and business laptops these days, and this has that. And so, I mean, a couple other things that you obviously always want to know is uh, keyboard's actually very, very nice. It's quiet, right? So I'm like getting close. But again, if you are taking notes next to somebody in your in your classroom or something like that, it's not going to drive people crazy. I know a lot of people like their cherry reds and stuff like that, and you're right. clicking, and it sounds like literally, you know, whatever going off. But mm -hmm. uh, and then also nice size trackpad. Uh, it, you know, it's nice and smooth. Uh, it does have things like being able to do the fit, uh, the fingerprint uh, sensor. And then the other thing to do is always nice for productivity is uh, HDMI out as well so like you can plug this in uh, basically have it attached to a monitor so a lot of really just nice productivity things but again not the most rugged of laptops right. and so uh, even though the uh, the top is metal the rest of it's kind of plastic and so um, you know definitely something that is light throw in your backpack but just be careful with what you do because I mean again probably potential if, in terms of potential damage um, if you're too hard on this yeah one. I would probably say this one's probably for an older um, student who is going to be careful with it and who also really needs the maximum possible portability because 2.2 pounds and really good battery life you kind of don't have to carry a charger and you're barely weighing yourself down it's like a thin book yep. actually one thing yeah that reminds me when we're talking oh, about the charging the yeah. charging yeah so this thing in our uh, battery test here at pc labs lasted about 12 hours and the way we test battery is we run a video file um, with the screen at half brightness so it's not a typical use case but it sort of gives us a level playing field to test all these laptops against the thing with this one is is that you can plug it in you get half a charge in 30 minutes so if you forgot to plug it in overnight, and you're brushing your teeth and you're rushing to get to school, you can plug it in and you'll have most of your charge there or between classes. You don't have to necessarily carry the charger um, around with you. Yep. Now, one thing I know for, you know for little Johnny and for many of my audience, does not, this is not a gaming laptop for sure, right? We're talking about yep. integrated graphics, so this is really just about productivity. Yep. Um, we will cover some of those a little bit later, but for the most part, like, I mean, you could play League of Legends and stuff like that mm -hmm. because, I mean, those run on potato, and this is essentially equivalent of potato on a, uh, from, a, from a gaming standpoint. The other thing, too, also pretty cool, um, and I always like this, and this has actually been relatively new, if you can see here from the side of the laptop, it actually does elevate, so in terms of uh, getting airflow and stuff like that, they did think about that stuff as well. But mm -hmm. again, light clamshell, good choice for yep. older student, uh, and then we'll uh, we'll move on to the next one because yeah, we got a lot to cover. Yep. Yeah. One last thing about oh, this one, one we okay. should point out is um, you'll notice there's a sticker, a Ryzen sticker on. Oh there. yeah. Yeah. So we tested a Ryzen seven version of this laptop um, last summer, and the one that we actually have on the uh, Walmart page here is a Ryzen five, which That's has right. six, six threads, twelve cores versus eight threads, sixteen cores. What that means really is that if you're doing a lot of content creation, productivity work, if your students a video editor or doing something along those lines, processing power in these is pretty good for the price and really good for the size. Yep. Yeah. And that's something that's uh, it's important about all of the laptops. Every laptop we're covering today sub a thousand bucks for the most part, right? Yeah. Pretty yeah. close. Or right gaming, around. Yeah. yeah. We'll get into some of the exceptions which are towards the end. Yeah. yeah. Which, I mean, we got to have some fun, right? Of course. We have yeah. a $14,000 laptop. Just kidding. No, we don't. <laughs> Where is it? Wait. <laughs> we should get one of those. <laughs> all okay. right. So number one is down. Number two. All right. So number two, actually, we chose as sort of an alternate to the HP that we looked at there. This is another clamshell. It doesn't convert into anything. And it's uh, from MSI. Now, this machine. Uh, so this, looking at the Walmart page we got right here, this is the MSI Modern 14. Yep. This is a 14-inch notebook, full HD, 1920 by 1080. It's got a Core i5 11th gen. It's an 1155 G7, 2.5 gigahertz, 8 gigs of RAM, and a 512 gig SSD. Right. So the one that we actually looked at had slightly lesser specs than this. So okay. This, so the uh, particular configuration that's on Walmart right now um, is actually better than what we tested. Okay. Um, it's about five. It's 649. Sorry. Yeah. 599. And. Uh, one of the things you'll notice if you turn towards the camera there, the keyboard, you'll notice light up keyboard. Now, yeah. budget laptops tend not to have that. Um, a lot of gaming laptops will have that. A lot of higher end ultra portable laptops will have that. But you don't tend to see it in inexpensive laptops. So that's a nice um, little uh, sort of side detail if you 
try not to disturb your brother while you're doing homework late. Yeah. I will say I will say this of the ones that we're showing today from the Windows side, this is probably my favorite. Um, a couple things about this um, in, in terms of cost, right? Mm -hmm. At six hundred forty nine bucks, it actually has a very premium feel. And it's funny we were talking about the fact that this is something that MSI has a tendency not to kind of push their productivity laptops, but they did a really good job with this one. Yep. Again, nice mm -hmm. keyboard, backlit. Uh, look, I love the elevation here, so you actually get a much more standard angle in terms of your keyboard. The keyboard has a nice feel to it. It's got a good trackpad. I mean, it's just, it's a little bit more premium. So, I mean, you know, we talked about that HP that we were showing off a little bit earlier. It, you know, even though it was like light, mm -hmm. this one definitely, when you pull it out, feels like, I, I mean business, yep. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing, MSI is much um, better known for their gaming laptops. Yep. But this machine is actually kind of a uh, sort of little bit of an underdog for yep. them. And it's been around for over a year, uh, actually more than a year, I believe. We tested one of these last summer, if I'm not mistaken. They're still selling lots of different configurations, configurations of them out there. So, uh, one thing I would also point out about this guy, um, the uh, this backlit keyboard. But look at the uh, the port mix on this. Yeah, I was actually I was going to yeah. highlight that stuff a little bit more. I mean, you've got you've got your uh, micro SD, you've got USB C, you've got HDMI, you've got power, you've got two USB three uh, three three point A, um, and then you've also got your uh, you've actually also got your audio out uh, mm -hmm. as well. So actually, way more in terms of I O for this as well. Right. Yeah. Because if you buy some of the higher end ultra, ultra portables that you see these days, and they might start at a thousand dollars more, or something like a Dell XPS or something of that sort, you might only get USB-C ports on it, and a USB-C port will then require a whole bunch of adapters and dongles. So if you're, say, like a business student and you want to have a basic machine that you can, say, show presentations on, you need yep. to plug into an external monitor, you don't have to deal with its C to HDMI yep. and a whole bunch of different sort of connectors. This has everything you need on there and is pretty, you know, is, is pretty well equipped for the money. Yeah. And then the other thing that's also, again, same thing, uh, nicer ratio. Actually, from a media consumption standpoint, if you're more of a movie person, a little bit more of a, like a more standard uh, ratio mm -hmm. in terms of your uh, your monitor. Um, and then what is the resolution on this one? Do we know? Yeah, 1080p. Oh, it's, yeah, it's yeah, 1080p. It's so 1920 by 1080. So yeah. like a little bit more standard in terms of that stuff, which, I mean, the other thing I will say uh, with school projectors and things like that, some of these non-standard resolutions can actually cause problems. Yep. I don't know. It's, it's one of those things like I, I feel like some colleges don't seem to update those things for up to 20 years. I don't yep. know, whatever. So yeah. Just plugging this in and making it work if you're doing a presentation is going to be a little bit easier. Exactly. Yeah, one thing we should also point out, I, um, this is a sort of a gunmetal gray. Um, the one that we're pointing to on Walmart comes in something called beige mousse. Yeah, where, yeah, that's a yeah. that's a color. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's kind of looks like a, I mean, at least on screen, it looks yeah. like a rose gold, but we actually haven't seen that one in person, so it would be, I would be very interested to see what beige mousse yeah. is in, in actuality. Yeah, no, yeah. And, and I'm curious, uh, chat, like in terms of w when with the kind of the options that we're showing in here, if like if you have a favorite color that you enjoy, I'd love to have you guys shout out in chat. Just let us know uh, which one was your favorite color of the whether that's the uh, the kind of the more typical gray or something that's like a little bit more unique. I feel like you know nowadays, and especially you know we were talking a lot about my daughter. My daughter is never somebody's like, oh, I don't want something gray, dad. I want something that is a multicolor. And I feel like kids. Uh, are almost accessorizing with their outfits or they, yeah. their laptop is a statement and which is why I always highlight when something looks a little bit more premium because right. I don't know I feel like now these things are their tech is integrating into just kind of their lifestyle as well. Yep. Yeah. So I mean you do have a few color choices here and depending on what their thing is, you know, you can probably find something that matches. The thing to bear in mind is that not every color will probably be available in every configuration. Yep. So you want to make sure you know when you're looking at a particular configuration whether it's on Walmart or elsewhere that it matches what you have seen reviewed and what you are would be paying for on another site. So you want to sort of sync up all the, you know, the RAM, the SSD, the screen resolution, because sometimes from model to model they may have different screens, you know, the, the, in the same chassis. Um, and, you know, obviously the processor. And I, I will say this, one thing that we will have, and I'll add this at least to uh, in our, in our, on the YouTube if you're watching from those, again, best experience is over at PCMag.com, but um, we will have links to the actual PC Mag reviews. So if you have other questions about this, I mean, like I said, you guys spend a ton of time with these laptops, so if they're, and they highlight both pros and cons. I mean, yep. the one thing that's really nice about uh, this being in partnership with uh, with Walmart is the fact that we're still allowing you to just give you just their honest opinion. So this is, I mean, your executive editor, you're giving your feedback, and we're going to give you both the good and the bad. Yep. And this isn't mm -hmm. just us just trying to sit there and say, like, yeah, I get this because, you know, right. why? So. Yeah, it, that said, we have filtered some of these because a lot of the machines that we've looked at that we yeah. didn't like, we didn't recommend here, right? Yeah. But we will, you know, give you warts and all on the ones that we did select. And, and that's, the, I yeah. think that's the, another really important thing is that all of these are things that have gone through reviews, and now you're highlighting them because they were what you consider best in class, and we're talking about what yep. those best in class are. Yep, they passed, they passed under the bar. Okay, yeah. well, there it is, number cool. two. Right, that was the MSI Modern 14. There it is, okay, yeah. number three. All right. This is, uh, so we're on to what's essentially my daughter's laptop, and so ah. she is a huge, so she, 
my my daughter really wanted a Mac, okay. right? And but again, uh, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Is that you know with the school that we use, they were specifically like, please don't use Mac. We're we're an office we're a Microsoft shop. Uh, we use a lot of uh, products. So uh, I mean Office products. And then she was like kind of going through that, and she was looking at things like HP and Acer, etc. And they just didn't excite her. But then with the way the Microsoft Surface laptops, which is what mm -hmm. we have here, which is the Surface Go, right. um, it, she just loved the way these look. So yep. here we are, guys. We're gonna yep. bring this one up right here. This is the uh, Microsoft Surface Go, Surface Laptop right. Go. Laptop Go right. This is the i5, it's eight gig uh, with 128 gigs, um, which is one thing I will highlight mm -hmm. specifically. It's like, this is 649, but their hard drive space has never been kind of one right. of my favorite things. Yeah, and one thing to bear in mind also, just a little bit of a preface, if you're not familiar with the Microsoft um, Surface line, super confusing. Um, the Surface Laptop Go is their small laptop. This over here that I'm using personally is the Surface Laptop, not Go. Yep. Bigger. There's also the, we're going to get into it later, the Surface Laptop Pro, um, which is back here and is a detachable machine. And then there's the Surface Go, which is a detachable machine, but smaller than the Pro. So there's the Go, the Pro, <laughs> the Laptop Go, and the Laptop. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. So I think I got them all. Yeah, you and, did. You did yeah. a pretty good job. Right. Um, and so, and guys, I did, we, I did want to highlight some real quick. Somebody did was asking about the MSI. When we get to the MSI, we'll definitely answer that question. Um, and, uh, but we do remember it, and we'll, we'll come back to that. But yes. Okay. Um, so there are a lot of surfaces, yes. and, the, and there is something important. And again, each of them kind of uh, fill a particular customer class. Right. So what about this one? Right. So this is a clamshell machine. In other words, just opens and shuts, doesn't turn into anything else. The reason we chose this one is we're sort of looking at it for uh, as a, a good clamshell for all ages. You'll notice that's a, a bit smaller. That like if you look at this 15-inch machine here that we have versus this, this is a 12 point, uh, excuse me, 12.4 inch screen and sort of good handling size for a younger child or for somebody again who needs to be super mobile. Yep. Yeah. So the keyboard is you know not compressed compressed but is small enough that you can handle it if you're say a grade schooler. It may be a little overkill for a grade schooler. It's a premium machine, but is sort of a, a good sort of like, uh, how should I put it? Just general purpose laptop for almost any student from grade school to college. And I will say, you know, having worked at, uh, you know, spoiler alert, I worked at Microsoft for 20 years and we were, I was, I was part of the team like and got to test these things really early on. A lot of industrial design in mm -hmm. terms of uh, what went into these particular laptops. So I will say probably one of my favorite keyboards. This is also one of the few that actually has touch screen as well, mm -hmm. right? Which is really nice and the touch screen's nice. It does work with their stylus and other things like that. So their ecosystem is actually pretty rich for this. So there is some expandability there. The other thing too that we have noticed specifically about the surfaces um, and not as good as what we've seen with Mac, but these do have a tendency to keep their value because they're just a little bit more mm -hmm. premium looking. Yep. Um, and uh, at the same time, uh, uh, one other thing too is I will say um, with this one it's not as bad but on some of the bigger ones uh, you do have to be careful with these because these do bend uh, believe it or not so yeah. yeah so if you have a lot of books in your bag and you know sort of it needs to be treated with care yep. probably needs a sleeve yep but a nice size for a smaller child and actually one thing uh, I realized we should talk about with this uh, a move on Microsoft's part is to a lot of the previous surfaces were very difficult to get inside of, and they were you know, not upgradable, not really very fixable. You couldn't open them up easily. These are designed to be able to take off the bottom, replace the SSD, and access the internal components, which is a um, serviceability and, I guess, uh, also just life extension aspect of this laptop, which is new for Surface and nice in this machine. And I, and I do know a reaction to a little bit of what you know people were complaining about with Apple, and they wanted to make, a, obviously, something a little bit differentiating. But really, really great device, very premium. I mean, when your kid pulls this out, if, especially if we talk about that accessorization or mm -hmm. something that just kind of your kid's proud to have, right. mm -hmm. this definitely kind of hits that bucket. And you know, you know it's, it's just, it's got that very Apple-ish look um, in terms of it. And then again, keyboard. Mm -hmm. I love the keyboard on this. It's actually got a rich sound to it, and that's so, some of that has to do with where they basically place the speaker so it's a yep. little bit better sounding than some of the other ones and then again you get the kind of that more squarish it's it's unique yeah, microsoft this, this one's three to two yeah. it's actually even more square than yeah. the others yeah and that was a very microsoft thing for them to do yep. Yep. so yeah Ooh. overall don't forget the color Oh yes. What is that? So this is what is this is the the, the this, this is the sage, sage green. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you know, chat question for you. Do you like you're looking at this through obviously another screen and then another screen. Do you see green in this cuz I mean again, it's supposed to be kind of like a sagey green when right. you think sage. 
But depending on how the light ends it, I think some people would think it's silver. It looks very silver under direct light. And when you get it at just the right angle, you get kind of a green tinge, especially on the keyboard. More so yeah. on the keyboard deck, I think, than the cover. Yeah, it so. actually looks like, I think when it's open, it kind of gets that little bit more of that greenish color, but stuff like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's a, uh, yeah, there are multiple color options. Just interesting that you have a green, not green. Yep, that is yeah. true. That is definitely true. And there are quite a few color options, so right. going for there. But the one that we're showing today uh, is yep. the Sage Green. Uh, yep. And you guys, again, head on over to PCMag.com. It's got that rich shopping experience. Uh, and you guys can see all of the products we're going to go through um, uh, kind of laid out below. And I know some of you are already doing that because we're getting questions for future laptops ah, already. Okay. Um, so cool. thank you for okay. being there. Uh, super appreciate you joining us and going from there. So that is the Surface. Now, that's not right. the only... Price. We should probably mention the pricing on that one, actually. Uh, oh, six four, $649 at Walmart. The SKU that we looked at, excuse me, the configuration, using uh, two technical terms here, that we looked at was $799, slightly upticked from that. Um, and you can find models starting at $599. So it's a little above budget, but still pretty reasonable machine yeah. considering the build quality. And again, that's I think that's what you're paying for more than anything right, right there. So, um, yep. And I will say, uh, the one other thing that I will mention specifically about this one is the service to support on this is actually has a tendency to be, it's pretty high end, it's all handled by Microsoft. That's something that we have worked yes, on and dealt with specifically. Um, I do know some of the other ones I don't know as well, but what I will say this with, the, with issues and stuff like that, uh, these guys are actually pretty good about getting that stuff fixed. So great yep. laptop, I'd say, you know, like I said, I would recommend this one. This is what my daughter specifically uses. Right. So I mean, I've got a lot of personal time with this one uh, as well. So Surface Laptop Go 2. Surface Laptop Go 2. Now this yes. one, here we go. This is our first like uh, kind of like two in one. Right. So the first three that we looked at were clamshells. Yep. You know, they strictly just open straight up. Now most folks have probably seen tear off machines that we call detachables where you pull the screen off the base and then we also have the convertibles. Yep. You know the two in one convertibles or the, the originals were Lenovo yoga machines yep. actually. Um, they were sort of the pioneers in this space. So this is a budget priced um, Lenovo IdeaPad Flex machine. Now this one comes in a whole heap of configurations and depending on where you're shopping and where you're looking, you'll find um, SKUs with Intel with all different um, processors. I believe there are also AMD versions of it. So depending on where you're looking, you're going to see a lot of different versions of this machine. Some of them are going to be also really cheap and some of them are going to be close to $1,000. And I think that's the thing I want to kind of highlight more than anything mm -hmm. here is that, so here we are on the Walmart page. This is the Lenovo Flex 514. Uh, this is an FHD, which is obviously the resolution uh, laptop. It's AMD Ryzen 5 5300U. It's got four gigs of RAM, 128 gig SSD. This one is Windows 10 gray, but Price mm -hmm. four seventy nine ninety nine right, like, which and is like uh, four seventy nine. Sorry, flat uh, yeah. for the price. Yeah. So the thing is, is we're pushing right now towards a four gigabyte SKU or yeah. me, configuration for a Windows ten machine. Now, ordinarily, I would not do that, and there are other uh, configurations available on Walmart as well. We're pushing to this one because it's lowest price. Yep. Um, but the one we tested actually was quite the other end. It was a sixteen gig machine, and I uh, actually should check the uh, the exact specs on that. It was a uh, sixteen gigs of RAM, five hundred twelve um, gig SSD. And um, I think both of them have a 1080p 14 inch screen. So you can get this in a really inexpensive version for a student who would only be doing one thing at a time. Say they need Windows, but they're mostly just going to be doing Word or you know, web browsing. Or they could, you, you could get sort of a pretty amped up machine for about $800. So people are asking, is it touchscreen? Yes, it is touchscreen. Yep, by nature, uh, actually, yeah. any two-in-one. Yeah, any two-in-one, like if yeah. you're going to do two-in-one, of course, it's touchscreen. The yeah. other thing, too, is it actually also comes with a stylus, and this yep. is a pen and a stylus in general. Um, so all I can do here is like I can go ahead and I'm going to bring up paint so you guys can see a little bit of um, it actually working with uh, with the uh, stylus because I was actually uh, impressed. Now again, you are using kind of uh, rubber here, but for the most part, yes. Like you can actually see this actually does a pretty good job of following along uh, in terms of doing it. Now it is kind of weird with a little bit of rubber, but I mean again, you can get a different stylus, but it does a good job with the writing and stuff like that, which is actually pretty cool for four hundred and basically four hundred bucks. That's actually yeah. pretty uh, pretty rad. So yeah. So I mean, you get a lot in this machine uh, for the money. I mean, the thing is, is again. Bear in mind the, the amount of memory and the amount of storage you're, you're getting with the specific configuration you're looking at. Generally speaking, we would talk, you know, for most students, eight gigs minimum, yep. you know, as the, the core memory. So the four gigs would be fine for a you know, sort of basic, um, you know, uh, report writing, web browsing experience. But if you're going to be using this, you know, every day in, in college, playing some games on it, you probably want to amp it up to eight yep. gigs. Yeah. But having the, uh, the pen included is nice. We're going to get to one of the uh, Microsoft machines later where you got to pay extra for everything. You know, the pen, the keyboard, we'll get into that. But this comes with everything in the package and like I said, 
entry price under $500. A little hefty though, right? Yeah, but the other thing too is somebody saying, well, what's the durability like? This one is definitely built. I mean, there's a couple things that are actually really nice. The hinges um, are separate. So in other words, I, I've seen a lot of these which are more cheap. Uh, they're definitely, you can see it's hefty, but for the most part, it feels like durability wise, this is actually gonna do a pretty good job. Yeah, I mean, that one feels pretty pretty solid. You don't get a lot of bounce in the screen yep. when you're using, because sometimes with some of these, the screen when you're typing on them, it tends to you know, you know waver back and forth a bit. It's pretty stiff hinges there and um, the general like keyboard and body feel are, they're not quite up to Lenovo's ThinkPad standards. Those are sort of their mill standard business sort of tank like machines, but pretty darn good for the money I think. Yeah. And then IO wise, actually you're actually doing really well here even for the same thing. Like uh, two USB, you got USB, you got HDMI out, you've got USB-C out, you've got uh, of course, um, uh, audio as well. Mm -hmm. um, now, the one thing is always, um, you know, we are showing this uh, in terms of uh, whether um, whether uh, this is a, this comes with the exact SKU. Of course, always check uh, the Walmart stuff. If you're big, picking this up because there might be some differentiation yep. in terms mm -hmm. of the I/O. Uh, somebody did ask, does the back is it backlit screen uh, backlit keyboard? And the answer is no. No. Yeah, yes, no that. backlit on that one. So right. Yeah. yeah. Fingerprint reader, though. Yeah, it is fingerprint reader. And then, of course, the other thing, too, is it says Dolby Audio. Now, it's right. always, it's a funny thing. I will highlight it. Um, you know, there's a lot of times, like with the HP one that we showed a little earlier, the, the pavilion actually showed, like it said Dolby, I mean, Bang & Olsen, stuff like that. Right. You know, laptop speakers are laptop speakers. If we don't yeah. highlight the sound, that usually all in all, like, just expect laptop speakers. I will say on the Microsoft products, they actually have a tendency to be a little bit richer, so we'll highlight that stuff. If it's something right. Oftentimes, when you see a name brand that you recognize in there, oftentimes what is happening is that, the laptop designer has um, had the laptop tuned, so to speak, using not necessarily speakers from Bang & Olufsen or some of those you know, brands, but that that company has had some input into how the laptop audio experience is designed. So not to confuse the two. You're, yep. not, you're not getting a high-end sound system most likely to anything under $1,000. Right. You're probably not getting a high-end sound system anything over $1,000. Yeah, that's either, true. So that is true. That. Yeah, it's just yeah. there's just something right. about like all in all. And like, you know, and there there is definitely like even on some of like the more three, four thousand dollars $4,000 laptops, again, even then, they're really kind of the best experience is throwing on a nice pair of gaming headphones or whatever it was right. or syncing with Bluetooth, even a lot of time with Bluetooth and throwing like your AirPods right. on or whatever it is, right? Right, so. especially if you're gaming, you're probably worried about positionality and, and also like not Yep. You know, ticking off your family, you know, with all the yeah. explosions and stuff. And sometimes, right. especially yeah. for gaming laptops, you're right. over, you're drowning out that cooling, that vapor chamber cooling or whatever oh, it was, because it's like, yeah, because you know, that's what you're basically <laughs> getting the entire dronum. Uh, yeah. Somebody asked, is the memory upgradable? I will say that, um, you know, um, on a lot of these kind of more uh, Ultrabook, uh, like more productivity focused, I would say it's not going to be no, near right. as easy. Yeah. I will say once you start getting in, we'll talk about this with the MSI and the Tufts, those are going to be more memory upgradable. Um, I, we haven't tried it on this one specifically, so right. I, I don't want to tell you yes or no, um, but I'm guessing that more than likely, usually on these, it's not as easy. Right, yeah, you will have to probably sort of go on an adventure of your own yep. to try and pry this open. And it yep. may, there may or may not be actually accessible um, memory slots. Yep. The memory might be soldered down depending on the motherboard design. It may also be underneath the board and underneath the keyboard, so you might have to take the whole board out. It really, It's very much laptop by laptop. And some of those have to do with specifically to keep the thermal profile at a certain point and stuff like that. So yeah. it all depends. I will say if we don't highlight it, then we don't know, uh, but we, w we, ha we did check like on the gaming ones for sure. Well, we do actually have yeah. answers on that one. 100%. Uh, yeah. Screen size, uh, it was 14, in, 14 inches. 14, yeah. yeah, so 14 yeah. inches. 14 inch or 1080p, so 1920 by 1080, standard widescreen. And yes, uh, people are asking, can you do things like USB-C, Ethernet? Yeah, this has just got this has got plenty of I/O. So if you wanted to get like an expandable dongle, dongle like one of those USB-C ones to plug in and get like Ethernet, additional HDMI out, yep. stuff like that, that's all just going to work plug and play with any Windows 10. Right. Yeah, this has an, a full size HDMI, but yeah, if you want to do Ethernet, you're going to have to do it via a, a dongle yep. module. Yeah. So mm -hmm. anyway, pretty cool. And uh, like again, I always love this, right? Like in terms of the tablet, yeah. like the thing that's always nice about these is either uh, what they call the couple modes. You got like the tent mode, which is actually really nice for just setting it down and watching stuff or just basically being able to just lay in bed and use it like a Tablet. media consumption device. So There's also the uh, the tray table mode when you're on an aircraft where you have the screen at you and the the uh, yeah, yeah, here you yeah, go. The, Let's uh, see here it is. The, the, this one so you're oh, sort of looking at look it like at that. that. You know, that's the uh, that's tray the table mode. Tray table. We've right, invented aircraft. it. Okay, so uh, well, just so you we, guys know, we, we really didn't. No, no, no. It's it's, <laughs> it's hashtag copyrighted here at PC Mag just now. So every time you use the term uh, tray table mode, it's five dollars. We're gonna put the dono down in the bottom. 
Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> it's to basically get some extra cash. But, uh, there it is we'll right send there. Send it to the United Way. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Oh, look at you. Okay, so there it is. Okay, we're, we're moving on. We're, this is our right. first now we're not in Windows mode anymore. Yep. Yeah, so we're at number five here for the day. And what is this? This okay. could look familiar to a lot this, of folks. This does look familiar to a lot of folks. And Roby Tech folks, calm down. I know we don't have a lot of P we don't have a lot of Mac people, but I got to be over here nice with the, uh, with, uh, the individuals because we have all the people here in the audience who are over here cheering. In mm -hmm. fact, this entire stream is being run off of a Mac right now. So let's there be really go. kind to Mac uh, because we don't want this to go down. And you guys are entertained. <laughs> um, but here it is right here. So this is, we're looking at the uh, Walmart page. This is the Apple 13.3 inch MacBook Air. This is the M1 chip version right. yes. uh, with Retina display, eight gigs, 256. And this is, the one that you're seeing here is gold. This one is the rose gold, rose gold we correct. think. Yes. Yeah. So this is the, um, so a little bit of backtracking. Um, until a few years ago, Apple machines were all based on Intel Silicon. Um, in 2020, they started to roll out their own version of um, a central processor app under the name Apple Silicon and the first family that is called M1. So the first machines that contained M1 were, were among them, the MacBook Air. And this machine came out late 2020 and is still very viable, is still sold by Apple. And this is kind of an interesting conversation because what I have in my hand here... This is the new one. The new one. The right. one that apparently you can game on if you, if you really try. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all we're going to say. But yeah, a yeah. couple things. Um, one thing is, is that when we get to Mac, I think the one thing that always kind of comes with Mac at the first point is like, this is $987, right? right. There's always yeah. some, there's always a little bit of sticker shock uh, when you go through mm -hmm. that. But again, it's Mac and it's similar to what we talked about with Microsoft, a ton of industrial design. Um, there's just, you know, in terms of it works with Mac OS, you know, there is some things in terms of people are talking about upgradability. That is definitely not something you're not getting here. Yeah. But I will say probably one of the best in terms of retaining value yep. um, mm -hmm. for in terms of like, you'll have people go on eBay right now, go to eBay, look up a four-year-old Mac. I mean, they don't drop that much. So like all in all, they, they do feel like in terms of handing them down and they do seem to have a really good job of still being performant even three or four years later. Yes, exactly. And the thing here is there's a little bit of a dynamic going on with these two Macs. So these are both MacBook Airs. Yep. They have slight differences in design, which we'll get to in a moment. But when this um, 2020 model was rolled out, the base model was $999. So Apple tends not to allow you to get a laptop for under a grand. Yeah. And that was kind of typical. This one was a really great bargain, especially during the pandemic and during the time when everybody was sort of upgrading their tech. This was a really attractive price point. And Apple has kept that alive, that, that uh, particular configuration. When they rolled out this one um, later in the year, it's several hundred dollars more as a base model. So if you want to get into the very latest Mac, you're kind of looking at, I have to look at the price, but I believe it's $12.99 as the absolute uh, floor. Yep. So you kind of have this interesting balancing act. You got the $1,000 entry lot model of the 2020 model and the $12.99 of the 2022 model. Now, how much you want to spend on your Mac is kind of a decision only you can make, you know, but you kind of have two different designs. You have two different chips, and we talk a little bit about M1 versus M2 chip. You know, what would you say towards, you know, um, this versus this? Well, and here's the thing. I will say this. Like, I, like, and it was funny. I did ask. So last night, you and I got, we, we ran, we spent three hours with each of these, you know, just going through this stuff. And I asked my daughter, I tweet, I, I texted her. I was talking to her last night. And I said, I said, Maddie, if I was to get you an, a Mac, I was like, would it like, do you like this one or this one better? And she immediately said, no, dad, you have to get me the new one because <laughs> everybody would know based on how this one looks. So it right. was essentially like that. So this is something that, you know, um, something to be aware of is that, um, especially if you have, uh, you know, certain kids, like all in all, they may want the new one because their friends would know whether they had an older right. one or a newer one. Um, yep. I actually do love the new form factor better. Um, and we did notice that the screen is actually a bit thicker on this, but this is just, they kind of smoothed a lot of the hard edges. So in terms of just carrying this and hold this, I like the uh, the uh, the newer uh, uh, M2 version of this uh, over the, uh, sorry, the uh, A2 version of this over the A1 version um, just for the design. Um, but again, th $300 more? Yeah, and I mean, the thing to bear in mind too is, I mean, there's a certain amount of processing uh, capability extra you're gonna get with the newer one, but for it really depends on what your child's doing with it. If they're not doing video rendering and sort of really sort of hardcore um, sort of media work, they're probably gonna be just fine with that. They would never even notice the difference in terms of performance. It's more around the design and sort of around the creature comforts on it, and of course, how much mom and dad wanna pay. Now, people yeah. are asking, hey, uh, good sirs, do all of these have Bluetooth? And that is actually a really good question. Now, we're not going into each of the individual specs. If, if we did, this show would be over 10 hours mm -hmm. long. Um, but one thing I will say is, uh, if you're over at PCMag.com, 
Down below, we have links for all of these that you can go, um, or you can check down in the uh, YouTube links, and then also the links we're sharing in chat, because those will actually go to the Walmart product pages, and whether it has Bluetooth and all that stuff is in there. Although that uh, said, almost everything we've tested in the last few years, Bluetooth is present. So I would almost assume that it's there. Okay. Uh, you know, butt check. You know, okay. Trust but verify, I guess okay. is the way to put it, right? Now, yeah. I, I, have, I have heard just mm -hmm. through uh, the world of osmosis that you may have some more questions on your Slack, actually. Oh, really? So yeah, so uh, just something worth bringing up there All right. um, well, as we're going in there. Because I do know that we do have some folks uh, who right. are over on, uh, over on our live shop page over at PCMag.com um, who we don't get to see that chat, so we apologize, but appreciate you joining us uh, and being a part of this. So we are going to get to your questions as well, guys, okay. um, and so we can get some of those answered. But we, we, we super appreciate the interaction. We're trying to get to all your questions. We, this, this can't work well if we can't talk to you, and we yep. want to make sure that you're getting your questions answered so you can make a really um, smart purchase decision. So what, yep. are, what are some of the questions we got? Okay, well, we got a few of them here. One okay, of them is cool. the, what is the most durable one for younger, uh, for younger students? Okay, yeah. that's a great question. Um, mm -hmm. we, we talked about a couple options there. Right. Um, what, the ones that we did like is the, the MSI was, yes, a, was a good sure. option. Right. Um, and then the Surface Go was yes, a little the Surface bit Surface Go, yes. The first Surface Go is very dense, and um, you know, as long as you have it in a sleeve, I think it'll be good. We're actually going to come to one for younger students. <laughs> I don't know if our number Number eleven is going to be perfect <laughs> if they're not if they're not taking it to school. I would say I'm so excited about number eleven. Right. So we'll get to number eleven. That's definitely our durable machine. Yeah, yeah. You know, but in terms of actual durability, I mean, we could talk a little more about that with each of these machines. But for the most part, I would probably say of what we've seen so far, Surface Laptop Go just sort of has a yep. bit more rigidity and uh, sort of substance. But if you it. want something a little bit less expensive, the MSI is also kind of a great in-between. Yep. It's all metal, it's all it's, metal it's yes. got, and it's, it's right. got that premium feel, but at the same time, and a lot of functionality for a really great price. Four hundred, what was it, four, six hundred bucks, something like that? Depending on the, yeah, depending depending on the, on the SKU, but it was yeah. a really, really nice one. So those are our two in terms of that one. Right. What else we got? What else we got? So what is the best for a new college student? So I would Ooh. probably Ooh. you know take a little bit of a step back on that one and say it really depends on what the student yep. is going to be studying. Um, you know, whether they're a commuter student or in a dorm, will they have another machine in the dorm with them and they're just sort of shuttling back and forth to class with the laptop? So it's a little bit of a, you know, of, of a hedge there. But of these machines, I would probably say, well, I'm looking across over here. I mean, if they're a gamer, that's something you know, to think about there. But I'm pretty high on the, you know, the HP Aero if you're doing a lot of, you know, sort of schlepping around campus or running back and forth to school. If you really need to keep weight down and to sort of have something in your bag, you forget about that one's really good for that. And there's even yeah. some options in terms of pairings, right? Like, so you might even do something like, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more when we get to the Chromebook section, where mm -hmm. you like you might do something a little bit more powerful, like the MSI gaming one, right. which you're doing a lot of your productivity work in your dorm room. Right. But then you have something light like your Chromebook or whatever it was that you're going to carry along with you. Take um, notes, right? But yeah. I will say this again: we're going to highlight this. If you are a college student. You should tech to, talk to your college first, right? Because mm -hmm. there can be circumstances in which um, you got, like you might be like, I really want to get a Mac, right. or I really want to get a Chromebook, and then they might they might be a Microsoft shop, right, where they're using Teams and stuff like that, and there can be integration issues. So right. uh, for any college student, definitely check with your thing. They'll actually make recommendations usually with their purchase stuff on what kind of stuff to buy, and then from there you can choose based on the different classes on whether you want to get a new MacBook Air or you want to get a Surface or whatever it is. Right, exactly, and it also depends on what the student is doing, like if you're in a media program where you're doing video editing and you're yep. doing sort of Mac-centric stuff, that's kind of a natural yep. fit for that, right? It really kind of depends on the curriculum. And again, we'll get to number 11. Yep. If you're a marine engineer, yep. or I'm, I, won't, I won't spoil the Yeah, surprise. don't spoil it. Like, right. I, I yeah, there we go. Everybody's like all excited about it and like mm. it's just going for that. Okay, what are the questions we got? All right, what else we have here? Um, so let's see. Uh, do you think the SSD will start expanding in these devices but still keeping the price low? I need mm. more space, but yes. I don't want to break the bank. Uh, I absolutely think that. I think right now, yeah. I mean, like we're looking at just the prices of NVMe SSDs as it is, right? Like I remember back when you used to buy a two terabyte drive, it used to be three, four hundred bucks. Now you can get them for less than two hundred dollars. Yep. Uh, uh, you know, you're looking at things like even like the the Steam Deck, which is just this newest device, like a 512 uh, a 512 NVMe essentially portable gaming desktop that's less than 600 bucks. So right. I definitely yeah. feel like storage is going to get to the point where you're going to be able to purchase like even in even in Macs uh, mm -hmm. and even in Surfaces, you're going to be able to get like 512 one terabyte drives, uh, and the prices are going to be very much right. The same. And I mean, and the flip side of that is also, I mean, depending on what you're doing with the laptop, if you're a student and you're strictly going to be doing papers or you know. Cloud. Sort of simple or cloud stuff. I mean, it almost doesn't matter. I don't want to say it doesn't yeah. matter, but it almost doesn't matter. If you're gaming and you're dealing with a gaming laptop, that's where it totally matters, yep. right? So it really depends on what you're putting on your machine. If you're doing video work, you're going to be shooting in 1080p, 4K, and eating up lots of space with drafts of video. You need I, a lot of space. I will yeah. say this. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to add this in right now. If you are a college student or if you're in elementary or junior high, 
you should be saving your stuff on the cloud. You should not be saving it on your local drive unless you absolutely have to. No offense, man, but things tech happens yep. and you end up losing a ton of stuff. It takes one time for you to basically lose a term paper, lose an essay on, you know, basically, uh, you know, uh, what whatever, the Louisiana purchase. And all of a sudden you're like, nobody wants to rewrite that. You know nope. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, again, you should be cloud storage. And again, I think, I think that was a really great point, John, is that, to be honest, like storage almost doesn't matter from a productivity standpoint because cloud is going to be your best bet. Right. And whether that's OneDrive, Google Docs, whatever it is. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Don't ignore it, but I would also not make it the primary yeah. thing if you're trying to shift between, say, like a 512 and a one ter 5, 512 gigabyte and a one terabyte drive. Yep. 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 So. For sure. Okay. What yeah. else? What are we? What else we have here? Yeah. Well, um, let's see. Um, what are your thoughts on standard versus convertible? Any cons to the convertible side? Uh, you know what? Honestly, it, there used to be, but I'd say that like the industrial design on the convertible stuff has actually gotten a whole lot better. Yeah. Uh, and exactly. if you're staying on like kind of like, especially the ones you're recommending here, right? These right. are definitely some of the newer, I mean like the, what, the oldest ones, like maybe a couple years old, right? Barely, not even. Yeah, yeah, not even. So yeah. I think I think for the most part on any of the ones that you're looking at here, yeah. I don't think that there's any drawbacks. It's just whether you need it or not, right? Yeah, I mean, we're going to get to um, a couple of machines later that are detachable convertibles. Yeah. So, so there's two kinds of convertibles. There's yeah. the kind that goes like this, yep. you know, and is a... Uh, you know, sort of a, uh, a single piece. And then there's the detachables. And the detachables usually have a particular um, sort of shortfall in that you can't really use them on your lap very well. Yeah. They have a kickstand. They're not super stable that way. So when we get to that, we'll definitely talk about yeah, yeah. that um, with um, the two, I believe, detachables that we have yeah. here. I yeah. will say, like, I mean, I remember, I mean, just, just to go down memory a little bit, but, like, the Surface Laptop, the one that you could eject, right? Uh, there were a ton of issues. Surface Book. Yeah, yes. Surface Book. Sorry, yes. the Surface yeah. Book, yeah. Uh, where you'd, some, even with the first gen, but now I feel like a lot of those think kinks have been worked out since some of that stuff is going in there, and especially with newer ones. So right. if, if you're into wanting to convertible, I think that right now, any of the ones that you're going to go here, we, you shouldn't have any issues, yeah. Right. But, yeah, we'll get into, we'll get into the detachable aspect after. Um, let's see. Other questions? Yeah, we uh, do we have okay. anything in our chat up there? Actually, no, no. I've been I've been looking. I've been looking. So we're just okay. we're, we we've been keep, keeping up on those. Which one is your personal favorite? Well, we'll have to do that at the end. Yeah, we'll have to. Yeah, we got it. We got it. We have to get to the eleven. So we'll go right. through the personal favorite. Right. And suggestions on how to clean the touchscreen surface. So I use so I use microfiber cloths, and then I yeah. So we got a microfiber cloth here. The other thing too is that. Um, a lot of, um, right. one of the things that I also like is at a lot of like uh, your lens crafters, they actually have the same stuff that I clean my glasses with, which yep. is just like, a, that's actually really easy and usually that stuff's pretty non-abrasive and uh, a little bit safer if it gets in the cracks versus just like schlepping a lot, bunch of water on there. Right, and especially if you have a glossy screen, microfiber tends to work yeah. really well. For the matte screens, I would, I mean, I would really look at first manual to see yep. what the re manufacturer recommends, but especially for the matte screens that sort of have a texture to them, I would look and see what they're suggesting first. But generally speaking, microfiber cloth is pretty safe that don't use too much pressure at don't use moisture. Yep. Don't don't use moisture unless you, you know, put on the cloth first and you're cleared to do so by the manual. I usually yeah. just, what I do is I'll get a bathtub and then I'll just put it in the bathtub. That works too. And then just wash it and then if you let it sit for like five minutes, it's fine. Yeah, it's, generally. Please, as long as, actually, as, long as you don't, don't listen it. to that at all. As, as long as you're going to use it again. Yeah. 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 <laughs> as long as you don't, if you just need it as like a prop. No, please don't listen to that. That is terrible advice. I just wanted to see the, the like, I saw like 40 people from the PC Mag office literally jump up and start running over here. They're trying to hold them back because I'm giving terrible tech advice. But no, don't, don't do that. But yeah, there you go. I think that's a great thing. Uh, if you want to know really the best thing, check the manual. They actually do a really good job in each right. one of those to telling you the best way to do it. And so, right. Um, yeah. Unless you buy an Apple product, then you got to buy the Apple polishing cloth, Exactly. Right? And right. I think, yeah. what is it? It's like $7,000 just for that yeah. and the little, the wheel that goes with it, you know? Yeah, I do recall <laughs> we uh, we reviewed it actually not that long ago. Oh, really? Yeah. It works. <laughs> it does, yes. Why is that not on the best laptop? <laughs> <laughs> we are, we're going to be going from there. Okay, so right. uh, yeah, I think we got right. through all the questions there. I think so. Yeah, okay. we're good for the moment. And then yeah. that is uh, that is the end of the Apple section of uh, this of the tour of this yes. tour right now. So, right. Um, right. And so, then now yeah. we're going to we're jumping to a new a new platform a new platform. Yeah. And this is the plat. You know, it's funny. Like I was uh, talking to my uh, editors yesterday um, who were going through. Uh, all the pros and cons for this, and they're like, "Why, why Chromebook?" Right. Oh, we have a little sticker here. We'll oh, take okay. that off. That was due, so we remember what it is. Okay. So go. why Chromebook? So let's bring it up here on the. Uh, we're gonna go to uh, good old Walmart.com, and thank you very much for uh, doing this in partnership with us uh, and PC Mag. This is the ASUS Chromebook Flip. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a 12-inch touchscreen, a two-in-one, which means again, we'll show that a little bit here right. in a minute. Uh, 1366 by 912. Uh, it's you know again really weird in terms of their processors and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then 32 gigs of flash memory, an elegant 
Yes. So Elegant this, we silver. were we were actually really pretty impressed with this. So okay. this is the skew that we're looking at, it's gonna be the configuration we're looking at here, 329. And the thing that kind of struck us with this, I mean, the sort of build of the um, hinges, the chrome there, no pun intended, it's running Chrome OS, which we'll get to in a moment. But the feel of the keyboard, um, yes. type on that a bit. Yeah, yeah, and we and we do, and we I definitely want to show this because these are like these are the kind of keyboards that like in terms of productivity, I really like. I mean, again, it's got a good spring to it. Uh, they're very well raised, um, and the only two is like unlike some of the other ones, and it still has a nice sound, right? Like if you guys are hearing this, it's like still got a just tick, a tick, really, tick. really really tick yeah. tick tick sound. And then you really sometimes the, the the thing about Chromebooks is you can't argue with the price at three hundred twenty nine right. bucks. Yeah. Um, one thing we did notice was. It, this like it does it flops a little. it flops a little like we did we did highlight that was something worth noting but again I mean a lot of that is just probably just to get it easier and you got the tent mode the right. now um, completely uh, copyrighted um, uh, uh, I've already tray table, the tray table mode right um, yes. and going from there but right. uh, Chromebooks are a, an interesting one in terms of um, a lot of uh, elementary students like this is so yes. what, what is what is the class what, what did you guys put this one in? so we put this um, sort of in as a general use um, grade school or middle school machine now depending on the school that your child goes to they may actually issue Chromebooks in class and carry them around in carts and charge them as they go and take them away at the end of the day or they may issue a Chromebook that your child brings home and uses but if you don't have one that they're bringing home or if you're not happy with the one they bring home and you want them to be able to use the same machine at home that they're using at school the same kind of machine I should yep. say um, something like this is actually a pretty nice bargain, and honestly, mom and dad would probably want to keep it for themselves. Um, it's pretty elegant looking, and it's got sort of a uh, a much more premium feel than you would expect from a three hundred twenty nine dollars machine. The other thing yeah. too that ends up, and I would say that like a lot of times, especially if um, you know, especially if you are in a more demanding college uh, college um, major, like. Uh, whether that's video editing, uh, engineering, or um, even some of like so like heavy math stuff, where you actually end up requiring like a discrete GPU or something like that, and you need something that you may have like a bigger, beefier laptop. Chromebooks end up being really nice, and this is where cloud ends up becoming really, uh, mm -hmm. really kind of a, a game changer. Is that you might have something like a Chromebook, you're just taking your notes on Google Docs, it's syncing with you. All it is is for basically being in class. Um, and doing what you need to do to capture stuff, and then you might be basically coming back to something a little bit more powerful uh, at your desk. And that way, you're not having to buy like two, you know, yeah, a twenty-five hundred or three thousand dollar, you know, desktop or laptop, and also another tw two or three thousand right. dollars. And the fact that also that you're using the cloud to put your notes and uh, sort of class, you know, class musings, you know, in the cloud means when you go back to that other machine, you can just access them from there. You're not messing with swapping USB keys yep. or, you know, anything like that. So and something know. small like this is just sitting in your and sitting in your right. backpack. So um, right. I, I would say, like, that's kind of the thing that we're going to talk about when we talk about Chromebooks is these can be great additive, low-cost additive yes, devices exactly. as well um, mm -hmm. to pair with something a little bit more powerful. Right, it also depends on your household, too, right? Like, not every household can afford to have four or five laptops hanging around. Sometimes yep. machines are shared among one child or between child and parent, or it goes in the kitchen to the den. And this is the kind of thing where if you have one of these around, that could be sort of a quick pinch hitter kind of machine. So someone needs to write a report on it. Someone wants to watch Netflix on it. They, you can then set up different Chrome pro profiles on it. And different people can have their own experience on the machine. And the other thing that's actually yeah. also I would say that we add this into, and this is like this is a great uh, just low cost device to introduce kids to tech for the first time. Yep. And I will say that both. Uh, Google um, and a lot of these things have really great parental controls yep. that you can pair with a good thing like this so the kid can't get themselves in too much trouble, yep. uh, especially if you're sticking within the stuff that's in there, both with the Play Store and even with Chrome, uh, setting up a child profile. And then for the most part, they can start to get used to this stuff. And then you're not, you know, if, if they break a two or $300 device, and we got some $200 ones too, right. um, that, you know, you're not, you're not exactly like worried about breaking the bank. Not to say right. that, you know, two or 300 bucks can't be a lot for some people, but for the most part, much less than building, right. like breaking a $1,000 MacBook right, or exactly. You know, yeah, like no, it's a, it definitely a you know a lower risk sort of machine to yep. get around and pass around. Also, uh, three um, is it three to two on this machine? Uh, the aspect ratio. It's a sort of a squarish panel like we were seeing on some of the others, but that's a lot. Not all Chromebooks are you know typically that square. And there is a. Uh, so yeah. actually, I think Pig idea. Radio. First, I want to I want to get back to Bath Tips. We are absolutely paying attention to every comment but yours. So that's the only comment we're not paying attention. We're not paying attention to Bath Tips comments. But mm -hmm. Pig Radio asks, he goes, "Hey, how do Chromebooks compare to a tablet running Android? Is one more useful, more powerful in general?" Right. So it, it, that's an interesting question there because so your Chrome OS machine can almost exclude almost all of them nowadays can run Android apps as well. So it's kind of like a 
you know, like a Venn diagram, right? So the, uh, the Chrome machine can run Android stuff and Chrome OS store stuff. The Android tablet can't run the Chrome OS store stuff. Yep. So um, the thing is, is if you're running on an Android tablet or on an uh, app on an Android phone, it'll be formatted for that. And they, those apps tend not to show up very elegantly on a Chromebook. So that's one thing to bear in mind. You have access to the apps, but they're not necessarily going to be optimized for a laptop form factor. Um, but you have access to the same app ecosystem for the most part. So you're not really giving anything up by going with a Chrome OS machine and you're gaining, you know, sort of all the, the Chrome OS aspects of it. Well, there you go. So there, so right. that, I think that's a, gr that's a great answer to the question in general. Now somebody asked, what is the best, like, when, when you recommend, like, based on the ones that you're going to kind of see, and we haven't gone through all of them yet, but what do you consider is, like, the best one as, like, a backup one for, like, a family or something like that? Right. A backup machine? Yeah, I would probably say if we're looking, if we're talking strictly Chromebooks, yeah. I mean, it really depends on size. We're going to come up on one a little bit. I'm That's, actually really excited yeah, about that the one, next that, one. That, that one is kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, um, this one is, I actually happen to really like this one, and the fact that it's um, very portable as well. I, let me get the uh, weight spec on it. I'm not sure that I recorded that here. Um, but no, 2.5 pounds. Yeah. There we go. So roughly, I think 2.6, the uh, Surface Laptop Go 2 is a 2.6. So it's about the same weight, about the same screen size. Basically, a cheaper Chrome OS version of a lap Surface Laptop Go that's also a convertible. Yeah, and for the most, I mean, like again, you get a lot of yeah. you get a lot of options in terms of how you use this. I mean, I, I definitely love this. This is one of the things I like about um, you know basically uh, you know the basically the two in ones is just how many options that you have. And at the same time, you still it, I guess you don't get touchscreen on this one then. Um, it, no, if it's two in one, oh, it yeah, definitely it's, does. It should, yeah, right. Oh yeah. Oh, there it goes. Ooh. Okay. There so yeah, and you, so you, again, you still get touchscreen on this, which is also pretty right. Nice, the thing so. to bear in mind is that Chrome OS isn't really wasn't originally built for touch. Yeah. So it's really more of a clamshell laptop experience, but it does work with it. And you can actually find, in a few cases, Chrome, Chrome detachables that are tablets, you know, can work exclusively as a tablet. Yeah. So anyway, guys, I want to take a quick moment here and just say thank you so much for joining PC Mag's cool one thing, uh, one cool thing back to school stream. We're basically walking you guys through what is essentially um, the best laptops for every student? Uh, I am Justin Roby, AKA Roby Tech. Uh, and then we are here with John Burek, who has the most impressive title. He is fleet commander of all of PC Mac. No, I'm just kidding. Not what really. did you <laughs> <laughs> well, so. Director of PC Labs and uh, executive editor of PC yep. Mag. Um, I get to handle all the laptops and play with a lot of the toys. So anyway, yes. today we're working in partnership with Walmart to talk about our picks for the best back to school laptops for all kinds of students. Uh, and then uh, maybe you're watching the stream uh, from my Twitch channel or from my YouTube channel or PC Mag's YouTube channel or PC Mag's Twitter. Well, pop on over to PCMag.com because that's where you're going to have like the best streaming experience. It's all part of Talk Shop Live. Uh, it's basically got a rich P uh, experience in terms of there's a ton of uh, like you can see all the laptops down below. It's easy to add them to your cart. You just add a Talk Shop Live account. So if you see one that you like and that you're enjoying, you can just pick it up right here uh, and uh, end up knowing that you got a really great purchase decision. Again, we are looking at all the chats. Sometimes we're not reading them directly because we're also trying to do a good job of showing you guys the laptops. But again, uh, really enjoy and thank you so much for you guys being here. We're about halfway through the laptops, yep, Chuck. Yeah, I think we're in the middle right we're there. We're right, right in the middle. Yeah. We got yeah. still so much more to show. And again, we are trying to get the questions uh, both from Talk Shop Live uh, and also from all of the other chats. So again, hang out. I hope you're enjoying the content um, because we got way more to go. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. So uh, can we go to our seventh laptop I'm of the so, day? I'm so excited about this. So one. I was actually surprised. We have all these great laptops here. And this is the one that, this because, is the one that you like. Okay, so yeah. I'm going to tell you. So I'm just going to start with the Walmart. I'm going to start with the Walmart page because you'll see why I'm excited about this. This is a 17-inch laptop. Just look at that price. Yep. So, so this is a Chromebook. So again, yes. this is not. The, but I'm actually really excited about what this potentially could mean for you and your family. So again, this is the Acer 317. This is a 17-inch. It's a Celeron Intel Celeron. It's got a four gig, uh, 64 gig. Uh, well, so I guess. Four gigs memory, four gigs, four gig storage. There you go. Okay, sorry. Reading that, 64 gigs, 17.3 inch. It's got a full HD, so it means you've got 1080p. Right. Uh, it's got wireless Wi-Fi 6. It's got 802.11. It's got Bluetooth 5.1, Chrome OS, 218.98. Right, so this is an interesting one because we reviewed this, I believe, um, it was uh, late last year, and it was listing at the time for 369 And I've seen it for not only Walmart, from some other retailers for way under, two, uh, way under $300, yeah. more towards 200 Now couple of things to bear in mind about Chromebooks, which we kind of didn't mention with the uh, ASUS. You can't really use the same spec lens at looking at those as you can a Windows machine. Correct. So, if you see, so remember how we were talking about four gigs of memory yeah. for a Windows machine? Four gigs of memory on a Chromebook is generally just fine. Yeah. You know, as a matter of fact, you're not going to see more than four gigs in a Chromebook unless you're buying sort of like a business or premium 
uh, Chromebook, which is not going to be sort of in the, the realm here. Some of those actually could come in over $1,000. So not too much um, actual memory, but works just fine. A Celeron processor is kind of the bottom of Intel's processor stack. Yep. But works fine if you're doing one or two tabs at a time and just doing one thing on the machine. So the thing here really is the screen. Yeah. So 17 yeah, inches. Yeah, yeah, 17 inches. I yeah. think, I mean, I'm just looking at the yeah. comments because people are like, 17 inch Chromebook, wow. I think one of the things that I'm most excited about is what this works really well for is elementary school kids mm -hmm. who you have parents who want to work with you on things, right? And so the screen is big enough that you can sit, you and your, uh, you and your child can sit and do stuff together, right? This right. is a great one for being around uh, as a family uh, and then working through them with, uh, say, on math problems, uh, watching interactive, you know, uh, media, uh, helping them do schoolwork, and both of you guys can basically see. A lot of these are smaller screens, right. yep. but for two hundred bucks, uh, in you know, on the top of that, it's like also great for just having in the car all that stuff. But I mean, look at the size Size comparison is kind of I funny. Mean, right, yeah. right. You know, for literally for what you can do. <laughs> I mean, just the screen size in general. Right. Um, in it's, terms of... Yeah. yeah. 12 inch or this yeah. one is. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, it's just uh, like, again, for $200, there's just so many things that you could do with this that just in terms of just not for school, but just right. all, of me, all, all of media consumption in general. But when we think about, you know, a great introductory product, again, you've got something durable. Right. Your kid's not going to, I mean, your kid's not going to walk off with it. If they do drop it, it's $200. Right. But for the most part, you can sit down and you can do stuff with them on right. this device and both people can see really, really right. well. Yeah, I mean, the thing we should really emphasize about this is like, this is the machine that stays at home. Yep. Yep. Nobody takes that anywhere. Yep. Um, the 17-inch uh, form factor even if it isn't that heavy and it's over five pounds so it's not light yep good luck finding a backpack that's going to hold that along with more than one book yeah that is yeah that, that is yeah. definitely true now the right. other thing too i also like is that charging on this one is usb-c right right which is also cool like so we talked about that a lot of, and we didn't highlight that as much a lot of these use typical bricks but there is actually something nice about just having a usb-c charger in terms of all the other things that you can charge with that usb-c right. on top of being able to charge your right your yeah trying to keep track of like a particular proprietary power supply can be a pain um, whereas you may have a USB-C charger that you use for your smartphone or for another USB-C equipped laptop, and they can be interchangeable. Yep. Some may not charge as fast as others, depending on what the wattage and the demands of the machine are, but it's the one connected to rule them all, so to speak. Now, yeah. some, now so uh, this is a really interesting question. Uh, John Washburn wants to know, is this actually live? Is this actually live? How do we prove that? How do we know? How do we, John? If What's you have any, John, if you have, I any wish I had idea, like today's newspaper yeah, to hold like, up or John, something. John, if you but, have a way yeah. for us to show if it's actually live, I'd love for you to just let us know in the chat if it's actually live. So yeah, yeah. So John, let us I know. Mean, if, I can say if, it's it's August third. It's two twenty six <laughs> p.m. in New York. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I guess you yeah, can show actually, your yeah. phone. Ah uh, uh, yes. Right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> John's, like, John, I John's like John's like John's like yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Of course. There's only way. We're psychic. We knew you were going to ask that question, so this is actually pre-recorded. We're going to get a phone. Yeah. We're going to get a phone. I left my phone. <laughs> back at my desk so I didn't get a call from uh, uh, Die know. the Milkman asks is there a forum post with all these laptops and I don't know if he's I, I, he's probably not asking it from my channel but like will there be like a recap on yeah, the so on, at the at the end of this um, live stream we can put a uh, list of all of the review links okay. um, so if you go to the uh, the talk shop live interface on PCMag you'll be able to go to the Walmart pages of these specific yeah. machines after this is over we're going to put up a list of all the um, reviewed uh, reviewed configurations as yeah, well yeah and down in the description below for both for all the YouTubes all of these are all linked down in the description below, but we are also adding it for the Robitech side. So we'll have both the PC Mag review as well as a link to go and purchase these afterwards if you wanted to as well. Yes. So mm -hmm. glad we could do that. John, I, I just we always like the kid when people ask that question. So thanks for thanks for being that guy. I appreciate it <laughs> uh, and going in there. But again, uh, 219.98. I, like I just, I really was excited about this one, right. especially for the size. And it is rare nowadays. There's not a ton of these large right. Chromebook type devices, and so right. Um, there's actually two. I think believe there's this Acer and Asus also makes a 17 inch Chromebook, and that's that's, that's it. Unless, that's unless someone else is, uh, yep. is putting out. Yeah. So, but there we go, guys. Let me go. Ugh, let me. Yeah. Can you can you handle let that? Let me uh, get this. All right. I'll leave over it to the. You. Yep, over to the other go. side, but there it is right here. Now, I also am pretty excited about this because we're getting into something yeah. a little bit more premium here. Yep. Um, and I will say, Lenovo kind of knocked it out of the park yep. um, just with um, the overall design for this. And you were talking about that you feel like they've taken some of the stuff from ThinkPad and kind of brought it over to the... Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, if you look at the keyboard on this, so this is a little bit of preface. Again, this is a Chrome machine, um, a Chromebook Duet, um, known as the IdeaPad Chromebook Duet. Actually, it's an IdeaPad. Yeah, IdeaPad so, Chromebook yeah, Duet. Yeah, so when we go, we'll yeah. bring up right now. Let's look at the 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 Walmart page. So again, you guys can see exactly what we're talking about. So this is the Lenovo IdeaPad Duet Five. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got again 
a bunch of, don't need to pay attention to those because it's a little bit different, but it's got a detachable keyboard. It's Snapdragon, 2.5 gigahertz. It's got Chrome OS. Uh, you've got eight gigs of RAM, which is actually yep. a little a nice bump yeah. up. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got 128 gigs uh, and you've got an OLED. That's yes, the thing. That's it's a 13.3 right OLED screen in 1920 by 1080. And I will yes. say, it never comes across when you're, in, not, when looking, you're, when you're not yeah. looking at it, but this screen is beautiful. And so, where would, we, where would we classify this one from a student standpoint? Where would right. you put it? So this one's kind of an interesting model, I mean, because it's kind of a, uh, first of all, I would say it's for older students because you're dealing with a detachable keyboard, a detachable cover, and an ability to use it only in certain situations because it's poised on this sort of flexing leg. So I'd say for older students who are looking for a machine that can sort of do a lot of different things, and this, again, would probably be best for a college student who needs this to perform a bunch of functions. You've got a tablet. You've got a note-taking laptop. You've got a uh, two-in-one that you sort of flex in different ways and at different angles. And you're actually also probably um, consuming a lot of media on this thing. Yeah. Because the screen on this, again, you're looking at it through a camera, through a presumably not OLED screen. You're looking at a really uh, cutting-edge, nice panel in this thing. And, and that was the thing. Last night when I came over and uh, you and I, after you and I had gone clubbing, and then, I'm just kidding, no, we didn't do any <laughs> of that stuff. Uh, but when we got in there, we because what we do when we have fun is we just nerd out about tech. Sorry, right. guys. There's a, just to let you in on, on just the fun yep. that we do. It's like, hey, let's let's just talk about PCs for five hours. And we're like, yes. Um, but yeah, when I was looking and we had all these lined up, the screen in and of itself on this is incredible. And again, if you really need to go down to just the screen, you can just go down to just the screen and so you get and the other thing too is it's got that really great aspect ratio for watching movies and all that sort of stuff and again you've got touch you've got all of those things uh, as well um, but yeah the screen the OLED screen I mean anytime you use OLED it just ends up looking so good right yeah extremely deep black colors and um, the one thing I would say about this as well is you'll notice that um, Justin just took the pieces off the machine there those pieces come with the laptop. Yeah, yeah, that Unlike is. I like the Microsoft. Yeah, we're gonna get to that with the. I don't, is that the next uh, one up? Well, two more. Two to go. more to go. Right, two more to go. But this all comes in the box. That's not necessarily a given when you buy one of these detachable machines. Sometimes you have to buy the pen. Sometimes you have to buy the keyboard. This one has um, the uh, the keyboard, and then this. This is kind of unique to this machine, that sort of snap-on back piece, yeah, just which enables the tablet to actually be like a tablet. It's like iPad thin and nice. And I will um, say, carrying this thing around, I mean, like, again, even just, like, yeah. the overall look of it, it's like, when you walk around with this, it actually looks really, really nice. Like, right. they did a good job in terms of just the, like, visual appeal of this, especially at 480 bucks. I mean, right. you get a really, really nice piece of hardware for 480 bucks. Now, right. again... It is a Chromebook, so again, you're not getting a lot of the functionality you're going to get, obviously, with a Mac or with a Windows device. But as like a nice, if like, you're, you know, if you, I, I think what could actually be really cool for this is like your business student wants something that still looks good when you might be in your economics class, yep. but you're still being economic by buying, <laughs> like not having yep. spent your, uh, you know, your, your light, pay, your entire paycheck on something that you just really need to take notes right. and do what you need to or do. Or if you also wanted to have an iPad, for instance, you kind of got a bunch of different devices here. You've got your note-taking device, you've got your iPad, you've got a, you know, depending on sort of how much demand you really have, you know, uh, from your machine, it could be your primary PC. Um, one thing I would point out, this um, little guy that I brought over at yeah. the same time. So this is actually known as the Lenovo Duet 3. This is the Duet 5. It's a smaller screen machine, and this is an interesting smaller version of that. It doesn't have the OLED screen, but it comes in around 300 bucks. And during the pandemic, um, there was an original version of this called the, uh, the Chromebook Duet. This is the Duet 3. That one, uh, Lenovo couldn't keep it on the shelves. It sold like crazy, and it was around, I believe, 249 And, you know, everyone who was looking for an inexpensive, you know, um, sort of schooling from home machine, kind of went for one of these. So there's also a smaller version for a couple hundred bucks less if you like the form factor, but you don't necessarily want something quite that big. And again, I mean, looking at this here, I'm just going to yep, show this it. up yep. close, but like, I mean, looking at this, like in terms of even just presentation wise, and this the, this one looks the same, it's just a really nice, nice looking piece of hardware. I will say what I use mine, and I have something very similar to this that I use, is this is the one that's sitting ne literally on next to my gaming stand. I sit, you know, if I'm going to pull out, like I need help with a guide, and you know, essentially Cole's not available to, to carry me through a video game. <laughs> like I'll pull it up, you know, I pull up, you know, uh, Xbox achievements or uh, one of Maka's uh, YouTube guides, and then I'll basically use this to basically help me with that stuff. And I know mm -hmm. I'm only spent a couple hundred bucks for something that ends up being really, really useful. Um, just as basically a light browser 
light note taking, and then of course right. you so know you keep on the side monitor social media feeds or things of that sort. And you're, yep. not, you're not using up the, you know your main screen real estate. Yeah, and I yeah. mean also like even for like a you know like going to a study group or anything like that, these are just great. Like I got my book open, I got my light thing, and then I'm not dragging around something massive like my MSI laptop that's right, getting ready to come up, up here pretty yeah. quick. So, so yeah, so pricing on this, did we talk about that? Yeah, we did. It's 481 for this one. Okay. Uh, we highlighted we 481 for this one. Again, a little bit on the higher end from the Chromebooks that we kind of showed mm -hmm. up there, but again, some of that's coming through with the detachable keyboard and just the about the convertible nature you can really make with something like right, this. Right, yeah, a couple of things we could probably talk about this, one up, one down. Upside, um, coming from the pandemic and everybody sort of needing uh, video conferencing, whether for schooling, for work, or just for keeping in touch with family remotely, um, they really upgraded the cameras on this, and the cameras on this are pretty darn good. Oh, that's a good what's, point, yeah. to, to what's uh, available in most sort of run-of-the-mill uh, budget uh, laptops. Um, slight con, no, you'll look around the edges, no um, headphone jack. Um, oh, that's kind of weird. Yeah, so you have to use Bluetooth headphones with it if you okay. want. Okay. Yeah. So, and that's that's part of what drop. part of part, <laughs> part, part of what keeps the size down, but it really depends on what you're yeah. doing with the machine again, too. I mean, a lot of folks have moved to you know um, AirPods or things of that sort, and that's fine, and they don't they won't even notice. But just well, a just a heads up. You John, know. you and I know if Apple can get away with it. <laughs> yep, there is that. <laughs> <laughs> going from there. But there it is. I mean, that's a great con. Hey, and that's one of the things I actually really enjoy about doing this stuff with uh, with uh, with a partner like you guys um, mm -hmm. is just the fact that we can highlight instead of sitting there saying like, no, this is perfect. This is it. No, there are drawbacks to every right. one of these things. Yes. And we want to highlight those things. So you guys are, you don't get in there and you, you get this out and you'll be like, wait, why didn't John say there wasn't a headphone jack? And if right. we miss something, we're sorry, but for the most part, definitely go back. They've done an in-depth review. Every one of these things will have links to the reviews. Go take a look at them. If you're just on the fence, you know, they've done a really good job. That's one of the things I really just enjoy about the, the, their particular publication is that they're not afraid to just tell you what's up. Yep. You know? And the other thing to bear in mind and that we're not really getting into here at all because it would expand this whole day is in a lot of our review, not in a lot of our reviews, all of our laptop reviews, we are comparing these against the other options on the market. We've benchmarked them, we've tested them, we chart them out against each other. And if you want to get really, really nitty gritty with sort of the nuanced distinction between how well this performs versus that one, you know, we have about eight to ten different tests depending on the machine that tells you sort of where it stands. Okay. And again, yeah. one other thing too is just because I know we have, we've had way more people kind of join us over the course of the stream. With anything, if you're going outside of just kind of the average, whether that's Chromebook or with uh, even with Mac OS, definitely make sure that you get in touch with your school or your university or whatever yep. to just make sure that it's going to be a device that's going to work really well. Now, if you use this, a Chromebook in partnership with another device, more than likely you're not going to have an issue because you're just doing note taking. Right. But there might be things, if you're going to use this as your primary device, there are definitely going to be some potential concerns that you might have there with just in terms of like, hey, if they only do things like on Windows shares or whatever it was, which yep. can actually come up in terms of turning in homework and stuff like that. Yeah. So. I mean, we can't say that too many times. Yes, yeah. we really honestly can't. Yep. But we will, like probably 10 more yeah. times. So yeah, there maybe you go. More. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Going from there. Okay. All right. So this Guys, back there. now this is for all the Roby Tech people. Just as Blade of Ice left. Thanks, Blade. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, we, 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 we actually guy. have to unplug this guy. Right. Uh, so our our only one, and they, and, I, and they were like, look, Roby Tech's going to be on the show. We have to have at least one gaming laptop. Of course. Um, and so uh, let's highlight this. Jump over to the uh, jump over to the Walmart thing right there. This is the MSI Katana. This is the GF66. This is a... Uh, this is an 11 UD a 1090. It's a 15.66 gaming uh, notebook. It's full HD, which means 1920 by 1080. It's got a Core i7 11th gen, uh, an i7-11800H, uh, It's got which is 8 core. It's got 16 gigs of RAM, a 512 gig SSD. Now, I will say this. I'm just going to show you guys this at the bottom because I know that question came up really quick. So we're going to show this over here on the bottom. You can actually see through the bottom here. You can actually see that you can get to the NVMe SSD. You can actually get to the RAM. Uh, we did try to take off the bottom. Yes, we did. Uh, it was a little bit tricky. I we didn't want to go too far, but again, you can actually see, like, especially right over, where is it? Right yeah, here, yeah, so there's your NVMe over. SSD. Yeah. You can actually see your uh, your SODIMs as well. So you, this is expandable. You can upgrade the RAM. You can upgrade the uh, NVMe SSD should you want to. And it actually looks, you can already see, they've got a, a vapor chamber type, type cooling solution as well because you can actually see that stuff uh, right here. But uh, in terms of what's our, it's a 3050 Ti. So, Ti. You, so you can find this machine with a bunch of different uh, configurations and GPUs. The one we tested, um, I believe it was uh, late last year, um, was a 3060. Um, it was on a special from another retailer. This one from uh, Walmart is a 3050 Ti, one step below that, but not too far below. And frankly, given the resolution of the screen, it's a 1080p screen, a 3050 Ti is going to be fine for mainstream gaming. Don't go too crazy. 
don't expect to be running everything at a very high refresh rate, and we can get into the refresh yeah. rate aspect of the screen too. I yeah. will say this, like, uh, so 3050 Ti, if you're looking at something like Cyberpunk, we just got finished testing one of these, so I could say Cyberpunk 2077 with uh, yeah, DLSS set to ultra performance, you're going to get about 30 frames per second. Right. Uh, yeah. Same thing, it's like definitely going to be something, if you're going to do any ray tracing, you're going to be wanting to use ultra performance with DLSS. Um, but I mean, like for your, like you said, you're still going to get pretty good frame rates on like your Fortnites and all the things like that. That's for sure. And then, and yeah. those are the ones that you're you're gonna. And at twelve hundred bucks, right? Right. Like, um, you know, it's your your uh, it's a pretty good uh, combination, especially with an i7 and a 3050 Ti. Right. Yeah. So I mean, the thing to bear in mind here is, I mean, we're talking back to school laptops here. Presumably, you want your child not gaming all the time. Um, so we did include this here as a uh, option because, of course, some children are going to say, "Hey, I want a gaming machine to game on the side." And they yep. may want that to be there primary PC, but some things to bear in mind. You want to carry this to and from class, say you're in college, there's a power brick to go along with it. The size is a little bit large, it's a 15.6. There really aren't many smaller um, gaming laptops out there. There are some 14s, there's yep. one and that's 13. And those have been brand new. Like those right. are like literally the age of the, four, like it seems like we finally hit the renaissance of the age of the 14. I know Origin has one, Alienware uh, has one on the way, but we just had like Asus and their uh, their Flow 13 uh, right. just kind of came out there. But yep. that's like, those are so new and we're just now getting to review those. So right. these are ones you've already reviewed. Yeah, we've reviewed the Alienware yeah. X14. We've, uh, there, I believe Acer also has a, um, a 14 inch. That's Right. It's a Triton or a Helios. Yeah. Um, so if you actually want something that's going to be portable and you're going to use it as a back and forth to school um, or around campus machine, 15.6 might be pushing it, depending on how uh, muscular you are. Yeah. Um, I would probably not try and carry this, you know, like on a long commute or something of that sort. And you would definitely want to get a dedicated bag with like a slot for a 15.6 laptop that'll protect it because it's big and also there is... The power brick, which yeah. we have over which here. Which is not, yeah, which is right. not, and obviously yeah. battery life is something else to consider because right. if you don't take the battery, the, the power brick with you, which my son has already learned mm -hmm. because he absolutely wanted to have one of these for a home. He has like a, he has a tough, um, and he was like, you know, he basically forgot his brick and like within an hour of basically being at school, uh, it was absolutely dead. Now, mm -hmm. what I will say where gaming laptops end up being nice is they're portable. And so unless, yep. especially for college students, especially if something's like, hey, I want to go and I might have a more demanding, uh, like a more demanding. Um, um, basically major uh, like engineering etc that requires a discrete GPU but mm -hmm. then I want to go play with my friends and we want right. to land it up together you're not dragging around a desktop you've got something you can go and play most games with right. without much of an issue I think people are really are would be surprised and again you can go check out robytech.com we have all of the same stuff PC mag as well um, if you guys want to see what the basically the benchmarks are you'll be surprised what a 3050 Ti right. and an 11 gen i7 will do from a gaming standpoint right yeah for many years I know in reviewing gaming laptops going way back there was a whole movie movement um, five, six, seven years ago where a lot of students who were engineering students or people who needed to do like deep content creation work would buy gaming laptops yep. because that's all there was in yep. terms of high-end machines that weren't, say, like really expensive business workstations. And if you don't want to spend four or five grand on a machine that's sort of built for that kind of stuff, for many years, a gaming laptop was where you went. And a lot of the vendors who make these things have since branched off and sort of created different lines for content creation yep. versus gaming. So like the Arrow line from Gigabyte. Exactly, so Gigabyte's like Arrow line, um, ProArt for Asus, yep. um, Creator for MSI, and uh, you know there are others as well. Um, Con uh, Concept Deep Racer, I believe. Um, so the thing is, a few years back, this kind of would have been your co-content creation and gaming machine, and for many folks who do both, it still is, yep. right? But there's become a little more of a division, you know, sort of um, in the road in the last few years where there are sort of more machines in that niche. Yeah. yeah. So again, a great gaming laptop. I will say, I will say this. The one thing I like is MSI who makes really great gaming laptops. Mm -hmm. um, they also, from, from a customer, again, another one that we know, customer service has actually been really good with these particular brands uh, as well. Um, and then for the most part, the reviews actually, the reviews for these laptops actually have a tendency to be, in fact, you know, one of your, you know, your, uh, we got PCMag.com reader's choice. Basically. Right. Well, that's and, actually, that's yeah. a reader survey that, yeah, we, readers, uh, that yeah. we run. Yep. Yeah. So, um, but we also gave this machine a uh, editor's choice, I believe, for value, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Um, so this is, um, depending on, you know, where you get it and what um, configuration you get it in, you're looking at, you know, $999 to $1299, which is kind of the entry point for gaming laptops. You can find a few below 1000 you know, but really 800 is sort of like the bare minimum for a new current generation machine. So this is just a little bit above that. And, um, you know, there is a little bit about this that is sort of above the base, you know, sort of the base standard. You've got backlit keys, um, 144 hertz screen, and um, you're not sort of at the bottom of the GPU 
ladder. Yeah, you know, 30, 50 Ti or 3060, depending on the model. And and the other thing too is I will say, like upgrading these, like even going to 32 gigs, which actually isn't very expensive from a right. sodium standpoint, yep. and even upgrading to like a one terabyte NVMe, which you can get for like as little as 60 bucks right now. Yep. I mean, you can upgrade this and actually make this way more expandable, which is something mm -hmm. that you're not going to get in some of these other ones in terms of just the ability to improve this. Now you can't improve, you, know, you, can, you can't do stuff like go and replace the GPU or the CPU, no, right. but I mean, still, I mean, a lot of, some of these uh, only have a single stick of RAM. So even just adding one more dim gets you dual channel, which right. you will be impre you'll be super improve, uh, impressed with what that'll actually do for your overall performance. Yeah. So I think one thing yeah, that is a good point when you're talking about being able to upgrade the SSD. I mean, we were talking a little before how for a lot of these um, productivity or school machines, the amount of storage is not immaterial, right. but you know, sort of a secondary concern in some cases. Definitely not for any gaming laptop. Um, game installs are huge, um, especially over the last few years. You sometimes have multiple Cod. hundreds. Of giga <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep, multiple hundreds of gigabytes. Yeah, you know, which would eat up, uh, you know, three or four years ago. If you had a two hundred fifty-six gig storage drive in here, that would be the whole drive, yeah. or, or even more than the whole drive. Yeah. So that's the one place not to skimp if your uh, child really is a sort of serious gamer. And like you were saying, it's good to look for that aspect of can I upgrade it. The, yeah. the one thing I will say, and this is something worth mentioning as we look at all of these, uh, with, the, with the advent of cloud gaming specifically, yep. like so Xbox Game Pass, uh, xCloud, NVIDIA, and their, their Shield stuff, uh, some of these things actually do have the ability to, as long as they have the RAM, to actually do cloud gaming and still stream 1080p directly to your stuff as well. So yep. you might have some options there um, if you don't want to go ahead and spend the money on a lot of these things, and that's where little things like uh, really great screens like what you get on the Surface or even some of these uh, uh, some of these other more value ones. Uh, what of these are covered would be most upgradable one, e.g. easy to open up service upgrade, Apple need not apply. Uh, <laughs> so uh, your, I would say you're definitely gonna get that probably the most in the gaming one. So the MSI right. is gonna be by far the easiest. Um, you know, Microsoft has made, an, uh, made, made it an, uh, uh, a note in some of their newer stuff, but even those, like, right. I That's mean... That's more like the SSD went bad yeah. and you need to replace it. It's less about upgrading upgradeability. The system. Right, yeah. So, so it's more like a ser serviceability more than upgradeability. Yeah, I'd, I'd say gaming term. is probably going to be your best bet for those things, right. um, which is one of those things that kind of goes in Right, there, yeah, so. I mean, just generally speaking, you're talking about either gaming machines or workstation machines, which we haven't covered any of them here because yeah. they tend to be more for business and they're much, much more expensive. Yep. Those tend to have access to innards, you know, and... Also, business laptops. Like, if you're buying like a ThinkPad, those tend to be able to, you know, be uh, opened up and you can swap out modules and drives or put TPMs in and stuff like Good that. Yeah. Like, yep. yeah. So, yep. like 100%. things that are into. Now, I will say this, like in terms of this is probably the highest end in terms of I think cost. I think we're pretty close. So again, most of these laptops, I think one of the things that is also important about why we chose these ones was pricing. I mean, yep. again, mm -hmm. a lot of times when you're talking about back to school, you have high schoolers and junior highs in there, and nobody. I, I mean, most of us aren't going to go spend two grand. Nope. Uh, yeah. On my, uh, I've seen the way my daughter <laughs> treats the tech. And right. as my son, and I'm not going to go buy them like a you know a, a two thousand dollars. Right. Yeah. And also, and then when you deal with college, mm -hmm. you're also talking about tuition and lots of other really big bills. So there's a uh, there's definitely a, a you know a cost concern there. Okay. So somebody said, hey, I'm not as technically savvy like you guys. Where can I go again to go over uh, the capabilities and price point? So a couple things. One, if you're over on the PC Mag again, all of this stuff is kind of linked down below. Uh, if you watch, head back to the VODs on YouTube, whether that's on PC Mag or even over here on robitech.com, down below you'll have a link to each one of these plus the review, which right. you guys do a good job. It's like the layman can totally go read and come out with a really good understanding right. of what's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, also on PC Mag, uh, worth looking at on the uh, back to school page that we yeah. have, um, which you'll be able to access from the site here pretty easily. Um, we have a roundup of the best laptops for kids, there smaller kids. We also have a roundup of best laptops for college students. So we have them broken out, you know, by younger kids and older kids and older children or young adults, I yep. should say. Um, we've A lot of these machines are in there already, and there's a few other good options in there as well. So um, we've definitely got that got you covered there. Yeah, so yeah. best thing, head to PCMag.com, or even just where you're watching the stream right now, if you're over uh, watching it with the TalkTalk Talk Live. Again, all of that stuff is easy to link and find, and we try to make that easy for you if you end up catching this a little bit later off of YouTube or whatever. Got it. Cool. Cool. All right, so anything else we need to say about this? I don't think so. Outside of, screen. outside of gaming! Okay. Yeah, I mean, like, that feels like just the best <laughs> thing, like, to actually have that thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. So... All right, we're on to number 10. Okay, we only have we only have two more? Right, so we have Man. a little one and a very big one. Okay, here we go. Oh, uh, yes. This is, so this is, the, this is the laptop my wife used as a teacher. I think so many teachers uh, uh, use these ones, and uh, for, for good reason. Again, uh, probably just great industrial design, but let's go ahead and jump over to the Walmart page just to kind of kick it off. This is the Microsoft Surface Pro 8. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a 13-inch i5, 8 gigs uh, of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, and this is in platinum. 
Yes, that yeah. is correct. Yeah, so I would probably say high school, college is kind of the the audience for this. You need a little bit of sort of sort of maturity to manage this thing because you can't release it on your lap. You have a sort of a fold out kickstand, so you need to have it on a, a level surface. There's the aspect of being able to tear it, you know, tear the yep. front from. And again, know, this is you are seeing something. If you're looking at Walmart, you may be like Roby. Uh, there's no lap. There's no. Uh, there's no keyboard on that. That's right, because the keyboard's more money. Yeah. So yeah, there. Uh, and even in there, like you can see that also we are also seeing here is you're also seeing the Surface Pen. Yep. Right mm -hmm. as well. Again, also more money. So like all of this stuff doesn't come uh, doesn't come with it. So when you actually buy the device, this is actually all you get. Um, you don't get uh, all of the additional stuff. That is all extra. Yes. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. like you said, you're you're going to have to just know it. Uh, it is. Uh, there's, it's not just as straightforward as uh, some of the other laptop. ones. But, yeah. And again, unlike the Lenovo, you can't really take this off. And you are paying a little bit more. This is seven ninety nine ninety nine. dollars Right. Uh, so it's definitely on the higher end up near that kind of the Apple thing. But again, higher focus on industrial design, uh, just a lot, you know, a little bit more powerful, some, some pretty nice I.O. Uh, in terms of uh, you've got two U.S., looks like two USB-C out. Mm -hmm. And yep. then you've got your charge port and yep. then just, some, you know, some nice, some nice thinking and stuff like that. And you get touchscreen. Uh, right. in a Windows device. Right, yes. Yeah. So most uh, students won't care, but the charge port can also be used with a Surface dock, so you can connect a whole bunch of other stuff to it. So this could be something you take around, and then you ultimately connect it back to a desk setup and a larger external monitor, and it's pretty easy to just, you know, uh, hook it all back up and get it charged at the same time. But um, like you alluded to, um, there are extra costs involved here. So the uh, configuration that we are linking to here is $799 for the tablet alone. There are two versions of the keyboard. Uh, both of them are in the mid hundreds. I think one, uh, check my numbers here, 139 and 179 depends on the kind of fabric and the finish on them. And then the Surface Pen, which is $99. And the nice thing that they uh, they did with this generation is that niche. Um, you kind of can hide the pen yeah. when you, if you show the uh, the folding action there. Like you sort of lift the, uh, the button. You know, like that. Yeah, yeah like yeah, that. Yeah, there you go. So you don't lose it, which is one right. of those things like for a long time, they're like, hey, and uh, Apple still does this, put it on the side. And you're like, right. yeah, that's <laughs> not lasting it's in my. $100. <laughs> you know, that's, a, that's a big yeah. mistake to make. Yeah, that's a yeah. mistake to make. But this one, you can just basically yeah. like, oh, I need to get to my pen. And then you just lift it up and it's right there, which right. is actually pretty cool. Right. And it also charges in there in, oh. in that niche as well. well I did not know that. That's new. Okay. Going on there. Yeah. So um, the thing to bear in mind with any of the Surface, because this is the Surface Pro, to make it clear, as opposed to the Surface Laptop Go or the other Surfaces that we talked about, um, the thing to bear in mind is that you get the tablet as one piece, you pay for the keyboard as one piece, you pay for the pen as one piece. So you have to sort of equate all that together you know, in your, in your total uh, bill. So I guess if this is 800, you're looking at... As configured, 10 grand. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take a zero off it. You're close. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. So, a little over a grand. Yeah, yeah a little <laughs> over $1,000. Somebody is basically saying it's like expensive with low storage. Right. Again, some of the things that kind of go in there is just you, you are paying for a lot of the um, a lot of the R and D and just the cooling and everything else. The one thing I will say, if you use one of these for a lot, uh, just given you know, I, I know it's one thing to show kind of around here, but the way that they do their handle their cooling is there's actually uh, fans all along the side. And the big thing is is that what that means is that as you're using this device in tablet mode. Uh, it's it's doing a very good job of staying cool the entire time, mm -hmm. and that is something where you definitely don't want to get done, and then you basically uh, finish it out, and then you uh, you basically burn yourself afterwards uh, because uh, your laptop's been overused or whatever it was, right? right so yeah. there's a lot of interesting things like that, which is a big stuff that they're touting for, which is where you get some more expensive stuff, is because they're packing a lot of power uh, in a uh, very small form factor, and at the same time making sure that you're not you're not in a bad spot. Yeah, when actually, you raise a really good point there because. With any detachable machine, you know, with a clamshell laptop like this one or this one, you have the room for the display, and then you have the room for all the other stuff, the processor, the keyboard, and all, all of that. With any tablet-type machine, all the brains have to be behind the screen. So yep. you only have so much space to work with in there for thermal engineering and to cool, keep the thing cool. So once you pull the keyboard off, that's all. it's all in one piece. So the thing to bear in mind is that for any detachable machine that you get, you're paying a premium for everything being behind the screen because it takes that much more sort of precise engineering, and oftentimes you're often taking a step down in specs as well because you can only put, you can't do say for yep. instance a gaming tablet in there, or a gaming machine in there in tablet form. I mean, I think we've seen one or two. Uh, over there's the years. one right, and right, like the, the, yeah. the other F Flow from ASUS, right, which right. has actually been and again using an eGPU but a 3050, which is actually pretty impressive that they right. got that in there. Right, but that's and yeah, it's that's pretty thick. Of, that's, a, that's kind of a <laughs> unicorn yeah. machine, yeah. right? Yeah, totally. But yeah, when you, anytime you're looking at um, you know a machine like this, the laws of physics apply. You know, you're yep. generating heat; it can only go you know one direct, or it's got to go somewhere. And if you have a thin machine like this, it's you know uh, got less 
surface area to put fans and cooling hardware than in a thicker machine. And then do we have resolution? I screen size, guys, yes. people are asking what screen size. It's, a, it's the 13, and then resolution on this one so is a little non-standard. Yeah, so it's um, 2880 by 1920. So yeah. uh, like the Surface Laptop, Go, Surface Laptop Go 2, that also has sort of a... Uh, in between oddball resolution, but it's higher than 1080p, yep. lower than 4K. So it's a it's a super sharp screen. I mean, no doubt about that. But it's um, actually pretty high for the screen size, and that's another thing actually that kind of and that's probably the same worth it. and everything else too, right? right? Like again, yeah. that was the other thing too. Is that that where they focused, and just like Apple was on these incredibly dense, beautiful looking right. screens, right? Which is almost like a super sample uh, for what you're basically getting from right. The site. That's a good point to make because. We have some machines here that are 1080p. Our 17-inch machine is 1080p, but we also have much smaller screens that are 1080p. And the idea there is that you've got denser pixels on a smaller screen of a given resolution. So it will appear sharper even though it's the same resolution, right. all else being equal. I mean, there's also other factors. Yeah. But basically, when you're, the larger you go, sort of the higher the resolution you want to go because you will see more coarseness you know, versus something smaller. Correct. Yeah. Okay, so again, very, very, like again, when you talk about somebody saying, like, I don't understand what the cost is, I think we did a really good job of breaking that down because right. a lot of engineering goes into making something right. like this even possible. But so. yeah, if you, but if we need a breakdown of this one more time, the SKU that we have, um, the i5 SKU that we have, excuse me, the configuration that we have on uh, Walmart is 799 The keyboard, depending on the keyboard you uh, get, is either 139 or 179 so we can add that up. So you're in the mid-900s now, and the pen, if you want the pen, is another 100 So you're looking at, if you want the whole kit, a little more than a thousand dollars plus, you know, sales taxes, delivery, and any other, yep. you know. Uh, or you can yeah. just come on down here to the PC Mag site. We'll sell it to you for fifty bucks. Right there, you go. <laughs> right yeah, outside the door over there. Yeah, right outside the door. Uh, yeah, just ask for Lauren. She'll she'll get you hooked up. <laughs> Going from there. Okay. All right. I think we're on to the last one. Yeah, I think we are there. So this is the one that we're, I'm actually going to grab. This yeah, one, you're so excited about this one. And this right. was your this one you put in there. You made this your choice. Right. So interesting machine. So. Um, this I'll is, let you hold it. Yeah, here we go. So let, I can, me, so I can let, me hold, let me hold right. it. Um, right. This one also, you can fend off burglars in your home. That's just how durable it is. Right. Um, so, so rugged laptops um, are on a big scale. Um, you have your $4,000, $5,000 sort of rugged machines. You know, the big name in there is Panasonic and their tough books. Those are the things that you have in police cars, first responders have. They issue them to the military. They're super heavy. Sometimes they got a, like a briefcase handle on them. And your student's not going to be taking that to school. It's overkill, and it also costs fortune. Um, this is sort of a nice middle ground between sort of a mainstream clamshell laptop and a ruggedized machine. Um, it's from Acer. Um, they have a line of machines called Enduro. Um, they, their original Enduro was actually a more ruggedized machine than this, and this is what's known as the Enduro Urban. Um, actually, Enduro Urban N3. So um, you can take a little tour around the edge of this thing, and it's got sort of like a little bit of like that Panasonic tough book look yeah. to it, but in a sort of consumer-friendly machine. But let's jump to the Walmart page just yep. to show this a little bit more. Because mm -hmm. again, we always want to highlight this because the one that's on, looks like the one that's on here is actually in blue, which I'm a huge fan of because yep. I like blue mm -hmm. a lot. So this is again, the Acer Enduro, it's the Urban N3. It's a 14 inch full HD, which means you got 1920 by 1080. It's got a Core i7, 1165 G7, mm -hmm. 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM, a one terabyte NVMe SSD. Uh, it's in denim blue here, Windows 10 Home, and then $879.99. Yeah, so right? we've seen, um, so they started around $799 for the, the most basic configurations. The one we tested um, not that long ago, it was a few months, was uh, $999. And yeah. it's, there's not too much variability between um, the configurations there. The one that we tested was a uh, i7 16 gig one. Actually, it's the same configuration um, now that I look at it here. So um, looks like it's been discounted a bit on Walmart here. But which is, nice, yeah. And then again, all of the ports are covered. Because we want to talk about, there's a rating on this thing, which is actually right. pretty important. Which yeah, so, this, so this, this opens up a uh, sort of a, a can of worms when it comes to rugged laptops and rugged gear in general. Um, different machines are rated for uh, different aspects of ruggedness. And there's a drop aspect, there's a um, liquid resistance aspect, there's a solids resistance aspect. And when I say solids resistance, that could be dirt, sand. Water. You know, oh, yeah. yeah, water for liquid. So this one is, um, just to make sure I get this right, it's what's um, known as IP53. IP is ingress protection, which tells you sort of what is the level of resistance that this is um, meant to fend off um, in terms of ingress for you know, yep. inco incoming uh, materials. So the 53, let me just, uh, I'm just going to read this off here because I will otherwise get it wrong. Um, it is supposed to be proof from blowing dust and blowing dust and water sprays that are issued more than 60 degrees off vertical. 
So that's really that's, important. That's very precise. Yeah, that's very right. important. It has to, if it's 59 yeah. degrees, not rated. Right. It's gonna, yeah. it'll, it'll break <laughs> the moment you go below. So, yeah, go so you got to make sure it rains on it. Yeah, the rain's got to be coming down. Yeah, you gotta, you know, like when you come right. outside, if you could just come out with your protractor, make sure that the rain's at 60 degrees. You're like, okay, I'm completely fine right. to sit yeah. here and use my laptop. I mean, we're joking around, but really, the, <laughs> yeah, the thing is, is if if your son or daughter tends to come home with their laptop, you know, in their backpack, it's raining out. They didn't bring their their um, uh, umbrella with them, and I've had many instances of having to put textbooks on a radiator to get them dried out. Don't have to worry about it so much yep. with this machine. Um, if they uh, live in an um, environment where it's likely to be exposed to you know, environmental hazards, if your student is a college student maybe and is going to be outside doing a lot of field work, maybe they're doing like archaeology, marine biology, or right. something of that sort, you need something that's like not, it's not a tank, but it's able to resist sort of casual abuse. Um, you can also supposedly drop it from four feet. Oh, um, we could drop it from four. Yeah, feet. we could. Oh, right here on the chat. Like that's what we yeah, that's what, yeah, everybody like all everybody like all the crews like yes yes yes. We haven't had enough drama on the show. <laughs> should we do uh, it? Yeah, well, I think I, we should do it. We should do it. But, okay. you, but you should close it. Okay, yeah. we're gonna drop. So I th what is it? Four feet. I'm five foot eleven. So yeah, like, so right, I would just do it from waist right? height. Okay, waist yeah. high. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Yeah. So uh, does it still work? Yes. There we go. All right. It works. There you go. All right. <laughs> oh, I got to drop a laptop. <laughs> Well, I will admit, we have broken, not this specific one, but we have broken laptops. Yeah. And the, the other thing is, is, with a lot of these ratings, and one of the other ratings that this supports <laughs> is what's called uh, mill standard. I yeah. believe it's 810. Yeah. Um, when you drop something, um, it actually specifies what angle you drop it at. Oh, okay. So I actually don't know if what you did there was risky or not, but I know that if you drop it on a quarter or on a side, there are certain angles that it's more lethal than others. Got it. Yeah. Well, we, we just, I mean, all in all, like, I, I was already nervous enough dropping this because, uh, like, right. I got to go back and look at my look at my contract to make sure you weren't, like, if he breaks anything, he's got to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to explain it to Acer. There yeah, you go. Yeah. Well, Acer, Acer's like, Acer's like, that's already been clipped and it's already going viral on the internet. Yes. Yeah, right. I like that people are like, it's a slap top. You know what I mean? Like, all in all, <laughs> all the stuff going in there um, right. but yeah uh, who is this for I think we I mean we highlight this I mean this is a great uh, you know for an elementary school student somebody's a little yep. bit tougher like my son uh, you know what I mean like who is gonna throw this in their backpack and maybe use this in like right. lo locations out like you know a skateboarder who's gonna go edit videos who's also gonna just throw this and go and skate yep. around and if it drops a couple times right you know it's gonna probably be okay yeah there's a bunch of stuff about this that actually can have it apply to a whole bunch of different kinds of students. So if you're looking at, say, like grade schoolers, it probably is a bit much for a grade schooler to carry. But nah. if you're at home and well, you know, but you know, at home, you know, if you're likely to spill something on it, you know, it could take you know the apple juice. It could yep. take um, sort of a juice box, you know, sort of squirt it on it. Um, it could take abuse in the backyard, if, yep. you know, if you're throwing it around or you know being a little rough with it. Um, one of the, actually one of the uh, this is a bit of it's a little bit of Acer marketing because we haven't been able to prove this, but it claims to have something inside called the Aquafan where if you actually spill water into it, the fan is designed to dispel it away from the critical components oh, and out wow. the sides of the laptop. Okay. So we'll go, let's, go get, let's, go, let's go get a let's go get a bathtub. We're gonna go test this right now. We're just gonna see if it can get that bathtub at no. Right. Um, and 59 then, degrees though. Yeah, remember. 50, yeah, it's yeah. gonna be 50, yeah, as long as it's at 60 degrees. Um, right. One thing you also talked about is like, there are specific uh, like environmental engineering or, uh, you know, oceanography, um, you know, uh, like there are outdoor, there are outdoor um, type, um, um, Oh, uh, man, with degrees, or, degrees, yeah, yeah, yeah some disciplines, right. degrees. I was like, yeah. what's the word? Uh, <laughs> that uh, might, uh, something like this actually might come in more play than having something like, you right. know, a MacBook or whatever it was because, you know, it needs to just be a little bit more rugged, right? Right, exactly. And I mean, in 15.6 is a pretty, I believe, let me just make sure I've got that right. No, I take it back. It's a 14-inch screen. Okay. Got that wrong. Um, the body actually looks a bit more like a 15-inch laptop, yeah. but it's a 14-inch screen. You'll notice there's, a, you know, a fair bezel around it, whereas a lot of these are, you know, cut the bezel real close yep. to the screen. This one's got a pretty nice border on it, probably for exactly what we were demonstrating there, is dropping it on corners and dropping it on sides. Um, but yeah, the size is probably, you know, for a young student, probably a keep it home and sort of keep it proof from all the spills. For an older student or a college student, you've got a fair amount of pro uh, processing power in there. You've got an i7, you got an i7, yeah. You've also um, got an Iris Graphics, which is actually their newest one, like which is their yeah. newest APU that's built. Or, oh, sorry. yeah, that's right. Integrated yeah. graphic, yeah. Integra yeah, but that's cool. Um, they actually have an option for um, GeForce. I believe it's uh, 200 series, not okay. not GTX, but um, 200 series. So okay. low end, very low end, discrete graphics. In there. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, the Enduro Urban N3, um, like I said, a $799 to $999, depending on the model. The one we have on Walmart there is $879, and uh, kind of a you know a cool machine for um, and, and you it's, know kids who don't treat their laptop as the carefully is, as they should. A lot yeah. of times, like and I mean, I was showing us some of this stuff. It's like it even has like all the ports covered. There's actually a fair amount of I/O on this, um, and it's not an unattractive looking laptop. I do no. like it more in. 
uh, blue, the denim right? blue. Uh, but if you're, but if you've got the army, motif yeah, you've got going, the army yeah. motif going or whatever it was. Like you can yeah. look in there. So, so I'm like, it's not an unattractive. A lot of times when you think rugged, like some of right. those things, you're like, man, that is that makes it look ugly. This actually right. doesn't look actually half that bad. It's got like that almost that Range Rover Defender type look. You know what I mean? So yep. I got I got yeah. some smiles there from some of the guys <laughs> back there. Like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So going from there, but that guys. We did it, 11 laptops. 11 laptops. Yep. 11 laptops. And uh, so chat, would love to know, do you have any other questions on Slack? Did you yeah, get anything else? Yeah, let me take a look over there. Yeah, make sure that uh, we're good there. And I've been checking my see notes. See if there's any other questions that we, we got in there. Like, are Let's we... see. Um, hmm. Let's open Standard versus Convertible. Let's see. What is the best device or recommend if I want to have both Windows and Mac OS on it? Oh, man, dual booting. That yeah. used to be a much easier thing before they got off of Intel Silicon. Yep. Um, yeah. So I don't actually, I don't know if there is an option anymore. Right. You may have to go back to an Intel Mac. Yeah. So you might be looking at, well, on the upside, you might be looking at a cheaper Mac because it's a machine that yeah. is no longer one of the current two generations, but you yeah. need to go back to an Intel Mac yeah. to do that. Um, conversely, you know, don't work the other way. Yeah, it really. doesn't. It, there used to be a whole thing with like Hackintoshes yep. and stuff, but yeah. that, that's all kind of gone now. Right. Now, they, somebody did ask before, What's your favorite? Right, like my favorite. your favorite one. Yeah, no, you got to choose. He's got. You have to choose. choose right? Who's your favorite kid? Now yeah. that's it for today. No, just <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not making him choose. Right. No, yeah, no I guess I well, you know, it really depends on what I'm doing. But I mean, if I'm talking, you know, day to day, having to, you know, get my work done and also carry on a commute and what have you, I'm probably going to go for one of these two guys in the front here, either the Arrow or the probably the Go To, yeah. the laptop Go To. And I, I think yeah. I think I, so. My favorite in terms of just. If I was going to buy one and I right. was going to use it, it'd probably be the go-to. But right. the one, actually, believe it or not, I'm probably most excited about right. having seen is this 17-inch Chromebook for yeah. 200 bucks. Like I was just well, like I'm thinking of for the money I'll probably save for buying one of these versus, say, for instance, a full-size. Yeah, I could buy that. I could buy two of those. I could, really. Yeah, almost. Yeah, almost the point where it's like going from right. there. But yeah, I just am a, a big fan. Now I, I know that if I know for many of our, our the rest of our audience out here who's watching, every single one of them shows the new MacBook Air. Um, because they're all <laughs> Mac folks, uh, and then, uh, but I'd love to know, chat, which one was your favorite? Uh, I would love to see some endur. I probably got some endurance people in there right. uh, as well. But would love to know is how much does the 17 inch weigh? It weighs uh, 37 pounds. No, just kidding. <laughs> 5.5 5 pounds. It was in the five range. Yeah, I it was like five. Up. I think yeah. you said 5.5 5 on that one. Yeah, I'll check um, it out. Mm -hmm. uh, MSI, people are saying the MSI Katana. 5.2 actually. Oh, 5.2. Okay, yeah, there it is, 5.2 pounds. Yeah. We, got a lot of, we got a lot of gamers in the chat, so they're basically saying they're, they're huge fans of the MSI. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, no, uh, definitely would love to know what your guys' thoughts are. And then again, if we were gonna do one of these again in the future, we'd love to know, just uh, tweet at PC Mag, let us know what other kind of laptops you'd like to know. Would you like to see more gaming laptops, less well, gaming laptops, more all gaming laptops. laptops, all gaming right. laptops. Right. What other things would you love to see in a show format like this? Because, again, we're always looking for feedback to try and improve and make these things better. So, uh, mm -hmm. And the only way we do that is from feedback from people who sat there and watched, which I super appreciate. Any yeah. other questions that we had? Um, yeah, check out my list. I think we actually covered all the pertinent Good. ones. Or we answered, uh, so, well, actually, no, I take it back. We have a few more here. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, what about charging life? How long will these generally stay charged for? So we talked about, so on the pavilion, we talked about some of them have technology, like uh, right. the, the fast charge and stuff like that with uh, that'll get the 50%. Um, I'll be honest, guys. Uh, we may not have all that stats right up front. Right, that will definitely be in the in, PC in the actual in the, in the review. So right. if we didn't answer the question specifically for that stuff, head it over. If you had one that you actually liked, all that stuff is covered. That's all stuff that you guys basically cover as part of your reviews. Right, and the thing to bear in mind too is, I mean, there's, there's a lot of nuance to it, but. These laptops will run at different um, lengths of time depending on what you're doing with them. Right. So if you are gaming on a gaming laptop, twenty minutes. Right. 20, <laughs> <laughs> pretty, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. You pull the plug, it may throttle down, and it will run out pretty quickly. Yep. Um, if you are sort of doing stuff that is, you know, as the screen brightness way up, the screen brightness can have a great deal of um, effect on how long it runs. So there's a lot of variables, yep. and it's good to take a look at. Those uh, stats we have there because they won't give you an absolute for what you will do, but they will give you a idea, an idea. right across like the uh, the spectrum uh, of all the laptops there. Like, what can I kind of expect from this class of machine? Right. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Oh, well, let's see. Um, charging life. Um, which one will be easiest for grandparents who have to have help to have to, who have to help with homework? Ooh, that's a that's that's actually really good because again, that's really going to depend on the on on the kid, like and the a lot grandparent of, too, and the grandparent yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I will say that uh, you know there is something actually very elegant about Chrome OS because it's just very yep. easy to basically use. But the one thing that always gets tough is like you might be like, 
you know, you come over to grandma and grandma's really excited about, grandma and grandpa are really excited about actually engaging and then it's like, no, mom, all my stuff is up on Teams. And you're like, right. uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> so uh, I would definitely say, like, I will say from a simplistic standpoint, especially if you just want to get your, uh, if you are have a younger kid and you just want to get them into technology and you want to find some great applications for them to learn on, the Chrome, the Chrome ones are great, just inexpensive and very simple things to use. Mm -hmm. I will honestly say Mac is actually a really good one too because, yep. uh, you know, from a usability standpoint, if you're just getting into technology, it's very simple, so simple that I get frustrated at it because it's not what I wanted to actually right, do but it, also, but it also comes with a lot of the applications yeah. that you would commonly use right on the machine. Yeah. So you don't have to do a whole bunch of tech support yep. and get it sort of ramped up to, hey, we need a word processor, hey, we need this, hey, we yep. need that. You have it all right on the machine. There. And then lastly, I mean, if, if, if little Johnny or, or little Susie or whomever uh, is big into gaming, then, I mean, all in all, there's some great gaming ones that you can play some great gaming applications like Minecraft, et cetera, right, mm -hmm. and just be a part of that, uh, which are also nice and inexpensive from folks like uh, MSI, Asus, et cetera. So there are, uh, unfortunately, there's no simple answer because there's no, there's, there's no box to put every kid in. Right, and or so, grandparents. Yeah, right. or grandparents. So yeah, we, we go from there. Right. So, but, I that, mean, but that said, that thing is very good for sharing. It's very good for sharing. Right. Yeah, like, like yeah. again, it's like, and 200 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> like, still, that blows my mind. Like when he was saying there's like 200 bucks, I'm like, wow, that's, right. that's such a good deal. Right, you can gather two or three children <laughs> around it or a grandparent and a child. Yeah, you know, very easily. Just so in terms of just like screen and, and shareability for the money, that's kind of that's kind of it's it. got to get some appeal there. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Let's see. Um, what's the best one for the entire family to use when they are at home? Backup for everyone. That's yeah. I mean, but that's a, I think that yeah. was kind of one of the same things that we go in there is uh, it's just uh, you uh, there just isn't a lot of it's just not putting them in a box. It's actually very yep. similar to the same question we just answered before. But I do love this question, mm -hmm. uh, which is from uh, Daster. What would be a good choice for younglings who want to learn to code? Honestly, mm -hmm. any single one of these, because uh, you know, learntocode.org, all of those are all web-based, and yep. they work with any one of those. So if you want to go inexpensive, 17-inch is a great one to sit there with mm -hmm. and code with them while they're doing it, if you just want to be a part of it. Uh, mm -hmm. Or you could do anything like the smaller ones or any one of these, uh, it, just to learn to code, because every one of these are going to be more than fine at compiling code, uh, especially if you're going to use some of the sites. Um, the Windows ones, actually, uh, I will say from uh, just... Uh, if they want to start getting into more technically advanced stuff, are going to be a lot more compatible yep. yeah. than some of the other ones. So if you did something inexpensive down here, uh, like uh, the uh, uh, HP, Arrow? HP Arrow or even uh, at Microsoft Go, uh, there you know those are going to be great right. ones just for you to basically do some coding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's all I've got actually on my side. Over here. Okay. Do we have anything else from the? Uh, the no, studio I audience? think I was pulling those at the same time um, yeah. and going from there. But guys, this has been one cool thing: the back to school live stream. Yep. Uh, I super uh, am super glad that you guys tuned in. I again and Justin Roby, aka Robotech. I'm here with John Burek. Uh, he is Fleet Commander and President and CEO of uh, PC Mag. Just kidding. You already have an impressive title, but <laughs> there you we are. go. Right. Yep. But um, no, it has really been a great time yeah. having you here, Justin, to go through all these machines. I think that if you can't find a laptop here, um, I would love for you to message in and let us know yeah. what are you doing. Yeah. Right. Or like, what, 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 like, what really? is your kid doing? Like, right. I mean, and yeah. again, maybe there is something we've missed. Some, right. some spec we've gone in there, but this has been such a lot of fun. Uh, mm -hmm. We'd love to know feedback, and if you do want to leave feedback, uh, a you can head down to the comments down below. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, and let us know, uh, even in the YouTube channel, again, uh, tweet at PC Mag. Would love to get your feedback even there uh, mm -hmm. on things that we can do to improve, other things you'd love to have us cover um, if we were going to do these in the future. Uh, yeah, and then uh, outside of that, uh, we'll uh, go from there. I think that's, I I think think that's, that's pretty it. much I it. it. I yeah. want to say a huge thank you, obviously, to uh, partner uh, partnering with us with Walmart. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think we're, we're pretty done. good. Yeah, we're good. I mean, Go forth and research laptops. Yeah, go forth and research laptops. Again, all the links mm -hmm. are down below. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, both for uh, purchasing these, if you want to pick them up at a later date, or if you want to check out those awesome PC Mag reviews. Anyway, I'm Justin. This is John. Yes. And we're signing off. We'll see you guys on the all next right. episode. Thank you for joining us. Bye, guys.